All right, everybody. Call your wives, call your husbands, call your lovers, call your sons, call your daughters. It is time for the final. The Seattle Snooker Open 2023 final is upon us with CCU hailing from America, battling on Varun Junjay. Mike Dominguez will be in charge of the table of the referee. It's David Burney in the booth with Christian Youngers. It's a best of nine. Who is going to win this year's Seattle Open? Will CC repeat, or will Varun be able to knock him off his perch as it's a rematch of last year's final? How are you doing, Christian? Pretty good, pretty good. How are you, Dave Bernie? Doing quite well. Very excited to see this. A very great tournament all around. A lot of the players really enjoyed a lot of the action here. Really happy with the tables and all that good stuff. And we're ready, set, break off. We're in it. So CC to break. Yeah, it's tough to tell. Both players actually were able to dispatch of their semi semifinalist opponents 4-1. So um, neither uh, player here was in a grudge match uh, or a real deciding frame that they had to endure and all that pressure. So both are probably going to look pretty fresh. You might have to lean a little bit to the defending champ just because uh, he is CC and uh, as the locals say, he is the man around here. But uh, always pleased to, to see Varun going deep into these tournaments. He's a guy that can really pot some good balls. He doesn't really dilly-dally. He gets down on it. So mm -hmm. might be his downfall a little bit, just not thinking too much. But we will see. Yeah, that's a good point. Both players know each other pretty well. Um, believe uh, having been the final, pretty big contrast in styles from last year. Remember from what I remember, uh, CC a lot more deliberate, you know, very almost robotic in in some sense. Um, and then Varun is a lot, a lot more of a rhythm player. He's kind of on the ball, moves quickly. Maybe he gets a little bit too quick sometimes, but uh, it's all about that pace and timing uh, with Varun. So interested to see. If he's more settled down in this match, or I think he's going to have to tap into some of that rhythm in order to uh, prevail if he's going to win this one. You know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see actually these guys really open it up right now. With a best of nine, you know, we're going to be able to get to uh, the mid-session interval and have that and definitely come back after that to see who the champion is. But just, you know, let your hair out a little bit and... Uh, Let's pot some balls and maybe we'll get that arm going. I don't think it's the time to just play close-knit snooker, obviously. Both you know, players know the ability of each other and not wanting to succumb to big breaks. But uh, there's a lot of pressure on this final, so maybe... Uh Bike Garrett in the chat saying, Can the players hear you guys or is the booth far away? Um... I believe the booth is far away, but the players should not be able to hear us. Uh, we're basically, if you look at this um, camera angle, we're right above the poster that says Ricky Walden, Ox Billiards, in the top part of your screen. But we got some plexiglass in front of us, or acrylic, helps uh, isolate some of the sound. Yeah, it makes all the difference in the world, that uh, piece of plexi and, uh, and a wall and stuff like that. It's not... Ideal, we're not in like a bunker or anything like that, but we're not uh, screaming into the mics or anything like that. And this mm -hmm. might be the first chance for CC to strike here. He's got a mid sized red. We've got a few folks in the room. I think uh, some people are just probably uh, finishing the workday here in Seattle and going to make their way down. So I imagine this room is going to get busier as this final grows longer. It's good you're putting your support out there for CC. Yeah, I think that's a mark of a good competitor. Until the uh, end of the tournament to uh, have either the uh, 
congratulating messages or the chin up, you know, you can do better next year kind of thing. So hopefully it's a, a positive phone call, Ray, that you and CC have a little later, but definitely uh, Varun is a man that, uh, let's put a block to that. He's got a red here. Just color is decidable, really nothing to come off this. Yeah. And not really that great of an angle anyway to kind of clip off the reds and come up into bulk, so maybe he might just plot a red and it's probably the worst position that he could have been in there. Mm hmm I like it. Raymond Fung and Facebook saying, trying to message CC the past couple of days. Uh, he told me he doesn't want to talk to me until tonight. I know what he means. Good match, and I'm waiting for the call tonight. Yep, we'll see. We're going to find out. He's been playing some phenomenal snooker today. I think he is the proud owner of the high break in this tournament. 78 in the previous match against uh, Brady Golan, the man, the myth, the legend. Well, this is no fun putting that black up there, Varun. <laughs> Come on, we want to see some big breaks early on. Let's see it. Bike Garrett on YouTube saying, I'm, I'm going to say that I think Varun will get this in a decider on a black ball respot. Well, that's be quite the dramatic ending, uh, if there ever was one. That's about as dramatic as it could get, I, w I would assume. So we'll see. I imagine we'll, we're going to have some pretty decisive and clean frames and then probably some really really close ones as well so I'm interested to see how players perform tight pocket table it's not easy but they're showing us what they're made of leaving all of it out there Dave Daly on YouTube or sorry on Facebook shouting out go CC Sharkfin Gaming saying hi how's it going Welcome, welcome. Like and subscribe. Share the stream out to folks. We just got started. It's a best of nine. We're here in the finals. The Seattle Snooker Open. Hopefully, Dave, you're able to make it down to the room. And enjoy the live action. I know you probably are just coming off your work day, but hopefully you can make time to just uh, shoot across the river. Come see us at Ox Billiards. And anyone that's tuning in that is in the Seattle area. There's plenty of room to come down here. Admission is free. It's Ox Billiards on 1432 Pike Street in Seattle, Washington, USA. There also are some tasty eats and some cool drinks here. So bring the whole family down. It's a good family-friendly environment here at Ox. You'll be able to see some great championship snooker. If you do have any questions or comments on any of the platforms, we are on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch TV. Send it our way. We'll do our best to answer your questions. If you're new or even a seasoned vet, sometimes uh, you can be puzzled with a, a player's choice. Sometimes we get puzzled as well, but... It was a for sure thing that black and nicely bought it back to its spot so we can hopefully have some fun with that black ball and some reds. Benita Sani in the YouTube saying uh, this looks like a replay from last year's Seattle Open final. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, maybe. It, I mean, if I remember correctly, that, that one ended with... Uh, a whitewash from CC beating Varun, right? I think so, yeah. That's a jog into the memory bank there. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of snooker definitely in between, so. Somehow I don't know that it's necessarily going to be a whitewash this time. I think Varun will get at least one frame. He's been playing pretty well. He won a pretty good match somewhat decisively against... Uh, um, Canada's own Ross Branson. There was a couple of 
pretty close frames that could have gone either way that went in Varun's favor and yeah it was a good match overall he's been shooting pretty well yeah talking to Ross after that match he just he's like he just couldn't find his stroke today mm -hmm. he was uh, he didn't hit one shot over four feet and then that gets in your head when you start missing a lot of them then you start shaking a little bit and you're like should I be going for this yeah so uh oh cue ball it's gonna stay down table Yeah, something happened to our uh, Canadian friends. Both of them just rea realized that you know, these are two good players, Varun and Cece. Don't get me wrong, but I think Ross and Brady were both... Uh, they just didn't find the form today. Something was uh, mm -hmm. a bit off. Maybe it's uh, that jet lag coming from Canada. Yeah, that intense driving jet lag you get from a two-hour border weight. Because believe me, I, f I felt that before. Yeah, was it a long wait on the border when you came up for the BC Open? Uh, no, no, actually not that bad. We came up on a Thursday afternoon, so it was pretty good timing in my opinion. But uh, some of the guys showing up here for Friday night, maybe it was a little bit more crowded, I'm not sure. I do have a Nexus oh. card though, so on the way back it was much more pleasant of a trip. But uh, I'm also used to the U.S.-Mexico border, which... Uh, Probably is as bad as it gets, if I were to guess. Yeah, I've never been... Uh, that's right around, what, San Diego, San Tijuana? Diego. Yeah, exactly. Tijuana, I think, has, like, the largest border crossing. I think it's, like, 30-some-odd different uh, stalls. And yet, still, it takes sometimes hours to cross. Especially when the, they lock down all the lanes because they suspect some crossing of something or whatever. Yeah, anyway. Borders are borders. It's true. So here looks like uh, probably a roll-up, right? He's going to push the blue out, get it more in play, and get up on the brown. Oh, just overhit it a tiny bit. Yeah, there's a little opening there for Varun. Just wants to hit this red on the left side of the table in that cluster there. Just skin off it. Come off two cushions. This looks pretty good. Might be a little quick though. Yep. That was the right speed for kind of getting up on the on the color, but his line was just a little bit off for that. Yeah, if you hit that green ball full in the face, I think there's not a lot of power with the shot. That uh, it's probably going to leave the cue ball right behind. Not tuck nicely to the green, but I think still it would have been a snooker there. So he's leaving the door open for CC to safety back, clip off, and come back. Yeah, this brown and green posing a little bit more of a wall. But it looks like they keep finding the window. Actually, I think he's covered this. It's red into the left corner pocket. Single should show us. Yep. That other red that's higher up on the table next to the pink spot doesn't pass. Yeah, Mike Jesko maybe, but that's a tricky shot. I think he's going to be electing just to. Oh, he's playing it that way. Okay, that was the red that's more naturally going to let him back up table, and he you know gets lucky. Maybe he gets the plant on, but at least he knocks that red out of the pocket, uh, so it doesn't leave CC a really solid chance. Because from here, this red would have been on, but now that he moved it away. Looks good. Buck Buck Moose is back in the Twitch chat. Yeah, now it's going to be a real safety battle here, and whoever is the one to falter could be sitting for quite a while as these reds are getting open. Pink and black are out in the open. Ooh, thinnest of hits. He's going to want contact with one of these colors. Or he might get the speed right to get on the green. I was Varun tempted by this long pot. No, I believe he's always tempted by these. Just whether or not he has the, uh, the feel in the game, whether or not he's going to take it on. Just safety again. He was telling me before the break, or before this match, uh, that this, this tournament so far, he hasn't quite found the sort of uh, 
high intensity offense that he knows he can do. He hasn't really had any breaks over 30. Um, so I think he's been playing a little bit more. Um, so an interesting strategy then if CC is aware of that. Why don't you only just open up those balls and put the pressure on Varun to make mm -hmm. a high break? Yeah, I think the, uh, the fact that he's maybe not playing good offensively just indicates that he's probably going to be playing more safety throughout the match. Just a little bit more conservative is what it sounds like to me. Yes, Sharkfin Gaming, these are 12-foot tables. These are the big boys. Six feet by 12 feet, a lot of area to cover. Kind of notice more with these uh, players, you know, they like to cut that table in half, get down to the business end and just be potting in short, compact shots with reds and either black or pink. Mm-hmm. I've been up on YouTube. Yes, this is the final. Coming to you live from Ox Billiards, final of the Seattle Snooker Open. Hammer Smash, or Hammer Smash, Varun, I believe, was born in India, but now he is of uh, American citizenship. Oh, wow, what a So that's why he's donning the red, white, and blue. Yeah, I think even then, I think we're also having players uh, based on residency, not necessarily na na nationality, is what it seems like for this tournament. I think we basically just have U.S. and Canadian flags for the most part as folks, you know, who live here have been playing in this tournament. Um, I think that's effectively true because i believe with the u.s nationals and the canadian national you have to be a resident or have citizenship for said country yeah for the nationals exactly yeah. so it'd be nice to see maybe in the u.s and or the canadians with the the scorekeeping software maybe just have the state or provincial or territory flags beside mm -hmm. now cc for sure uh, yeah cc is also a uh, u.s citizen he did play in the u.s nationals for a few years um, was runner-up, I guess, uh, a few years back. Uh, last year, when we hosted it here at Ox Billiards, he was a uh, semi-finalist, from what I remember. Raymond Fung took him out in the in the semis, which was a pretty pretty awesome match. You guys can go back and watch that on our YouTube page. Yeah, Fedor Gorst is also getting a green card. That's true. It's a big, big talk there in the pool world about uh, Fedor, uh, who's a Russian national. Um, and, you know, since all of the recent um, political sort of uh, prohibitions for the Russian players at different sports levels has happened, um, he hasn't been able to play in a lot of the pool events um, because he's also not able to necessarily uh, leave the country and travel freely internationally. So I think he's in the process of getting green card status, citizenship. And that means he'll be able to play for Team USA in the future, which uh, being one of the top players in the world would be quite the contribution. Anyway, enough said. That's the pool stuff. We're playing the snooker now. And we got a good one. True. Let's see how uh, Varun can respond. So that mini little break uh, that CC had. It's kind of funny. He's in between both pink and black here. Has a little bit of obstructed queuing towards the pink. That's probably why he's taking on this black. He really doesn't have to do much with the cue ball. Just know that he'll be popping up. Oh, wow. So first big mistake we've seen this match from Varun. Mistake from CC in the previous red, setting this one up, but uh, managed to get away with it by having Rune rattle that black. 
Looks like he might be pulling out the reds. Is he, is he going to take this thin cut on this red that's above the top cushion? I think Almost he's thought. taking... Yeah, not the one. Well, it's more out in the open, not on the cushion. I thought maybe come yeah. that cluster of four over there, come off uh, the top one, the one that's closest to the middle pocket, and take the side and maybe get by that brown. Mm-hmm. Well... Seems like CC is going full aggressive in this one. Full aggression. Yep, that is the tendency to cut that thick. But it was pretty natural safety. Ooh, watch out, brown. Oh, that's close. Almost glued him to the back of that brown. That would have been True. dicey. So he found a different way to go to the brown than I thought he might, but <laughs> yeah. he knows the shot better than us. You know, we can we can make some good shots from the booth. But they're the ones that have to execute it on the table. True, true. Stephen Wong and Facebook chat tuning in. How's it going, Stephen? Our uh, U.S. national champion from 2022. Owner of Embassy Billiards down in San Gabriel in the Los Angeles area. It's going to be hosting the U.S. Nationals this year. Should be an awesome event. Make sure you guys go check that out and tune in. It's going to be later this. Uh, date for that? I think sometime in the fall. I'm not sure. August, September, around that time. Not sure if there's an official date or sign-ups yet, but I am planning to make the trip. We'll watch out yellow here. Uh, it's going to be a little bit short. And the line a little bit short as well. tough these first frames you know you want to get off to a good start don't mm -hmm. want to let your opponent take that first w strike at the match so a little feeling out here in this one it's not uh, smooth sailing and I'm pretty sure you know with the longer frame match format that these guys probably will uh, start to warm up soon enough but then as we get closer to the climax I think they'll start to clamp up a little bit and uh, be a bit more safe. Another long putt attempt, but it was kind of a shot to nothing. Unless this red that's just off the top cushion next to the other two reds goes easily. He's having a good look at it. Yeah, I think it's on, so maybe not a shot to nothing. Yeah, just nice needs there. to fully concentrate because he knew the black was a gimme over the pocket. Mm -hmm. And there's three red balls just out in the open there. Let's see what Rune can do. So there's that pace. It's uh, I think what it is is he kind of modulates his pre-shot routine speed. So he's here when he gets down. One, two, three, four. Big stroke and then shoots it. I think if he's able to stay on a steady rhythm, maybe not get too quick on that motion, kind of do a consistent amount of strokes every time, it's going to help him a lot. We have seen him where he goes a little bit wild at times, you could say, but so far so good. There. Yeah, actually, going back to that point about last year's championship, it must have been a whitewash because we've been talking at length today about CC's only dropped one frame in two Seattle Snooker Opens. Uh, two frames, actually. One from Daniel and one from this that's match correct. against Brady. Yeah, yeah so two. two frames and two Opens, that's not a, not a bad accomplishment either way. True. That's how you're going to hoist the trophy and win the nice cash prize. Oh, that sounded like a strange tip contact. Oh, I think you might have gotten away with it. Yeah, this red, even if it's available into the right middle, it's going to be awkward, awkward queuing. You can see there, I think, might just have an edge. Dr. Snooker says he has an undefeated record against CC that he was uh, playing over a decade ago. 
Yeah, he's gotten probably a little bit better since then, I'd say. <laughs> Everyone boasting their wins against CC in the YouTube chat. Yeah, a lot of it's saying, you know, <laughs> just one, one frame. frame. So <laughs> usually matches are more than one frame, so how are those other frames in the yeah, match? Yeah, I wonder. <laughs> At the end of the day, everyone uh, everyone loses at some point in time. Even the best they, uh, people are able to put a crack in the armor. Yeah, certainly. You know, the first time uh, that Stephen Hendry won the world championship, he came back and lost, I think, about 10-1 in the uh, first round of the following year. He was just so devastated, he asked his driver just to take him home. And he didn't mean home to the hotel, he meant home back in Scotland. Oh, geez. And so for about just over a three, four hour drive, he was just silent in the <laughs> ride back. Just <laughs> disgusted with his performance. Driving all the way back, well. Wow. Yeah, must have been a tough car ride. Well, I think uh, off to a little bit of a slower start in this match. It's both players probably knowing the Pressure is on, playing a little more tactically. But uh, there's a chance here for CC. This red at the top of the bunch. Yeah, this red at the top of the bunch of three right there in the bottom area of the table. This should be potable. Just screw straight back, maybe? Or just pop up. Stun. Yeah, stun draw a little bit. Would have liked to have gotten a little bit higher. Not bad, though. Buck Buck Moose and Hendry's YouTube is great. Yeah, he started doing a lot of YouTube videos recently. The Q-tip stuff, Tough Table Challenge, all those little interesting interviews with the players. It's kind of fun. Interesting what you play here. Is he going to pay it with pace to go up and down table? Makes the pot a little bit harder. Oh, nice shot. And the blue hasn't given him a pain, so... Like he, oh yeah, and he also has that other red. My mm -hmm. apologies, that's above the two that are on the cushion. Yeah, the difference between a nice pot and a nice shot, right? Still getting on the red. Oh no, this could be a disaster. Where's this red going? Oh, <laughs> so now, interesting. Oh. He's got a couple of starters for Varun. This could be could be the chance that he needed. Well, this has to be the chance that he's been waiting for. I guess this red into the right corner pocket goes. He's going to start with that and take advantage of the black. I think if your confidence level is high, you're always going to take what's you know more advantageous for you to run most colors and points at the table first. Um, oftentimes, players will always just shoot for the red that's in the top right corner of the table. Um, the green pocket, you could say, right? feel like, I don't know, that is a tendency because you want to get the free points, but maybe it doesn't set you up for the best uh, break. You should save it for later. Oh, no. Wow. But that's the problem there when you miss Q. Terribly, yeah. It was looking like he was revving up for a well done. Yeah, like that red, as you mentioned, by the green pocket is just there as a a saving grace just in case they get really out of position on one of these reds. They know that they have that as backup. Mm -hmm. So I didn't mind that Varun was taking that red into the corner, but surprised how poorly the attempt was. Yeah, Mayank Rana on Facebook saying Varun is looking more composed and comfortable this year than in the finals than last year. Uh, yeah, I would agree. It definitely, there's a different... Uh, presence to him this time I think last time he's kind of just happy-go-lucky hanging out but I think this time he wants his revenge he wants to take it a little bit more seriously maybe I think um, yeah his first uh, it was his first event in a final for snooker I believe but since then Vern has obviously played in this event played in the US Nationals 
So now he knows, uh, sure, it's all fun to get to the final, but there is work to do. Well, good cut shot, but where's this blue going? It's online, but the pace is not there. And actually, I think he's blocked this black from going into the pocket, potentially. True, but can run through the pink. Yeah, he's looking at the pink. I'm just wondering about the pink being respotted. It might actually go back on its spot and really hamper up this brown, so... Cut by the uh, black to get the blue out of their way. Yep, that's a good shot. Wants this to run a little bit more. Yeah, I think Justin got the angle, wanted a few more rotations. Oh, oh, triple D, oh, DDK. True, only the dreaded double kiss, but hasn't really left a, a sitter there for CC. The real double D is probably on Facebook chat watching right now, right? Sir Dave Daly, where are you at? True. Hopefully Dave can come down to the room. It would be good to say hello and goodbye, obviously. You know, I'll be going back north tomorrow. But I always enjoy my time with you guys down here in Seattle. It's yeah, a good well, scene. There he is, there he is. Always glad to have you, Dave Bernie. And Dave Daly. Remember that one time when... Uh, David Brock was here for last year's Seattle Snooker Open and uh, we had the... The night of the Daves. <laughs> That's true. There are many days out there. Good to know a Dave, just in case you get invited to a Dave party. Or mandatory uh, entrance to the party is you bring a Dave. <laughs> wow. Oh, uncharacteristic miss there. Mm. Uh, CC's just trying to find a stroke, trying to settle in. This is a, definitely a different vibe. Got some people in the room, but everyone's a lot more quiet. You can hear a pin drop in here. I wonder if, the com if they can actually hear us commentating uh, every once in a while. Well, I think uh, our man in charge, referee Dominguez, would have to probably motion to us. If, uh, if he could hear us, then probably the players could, so he would uh, let us know to rather channel our whispering Ted Lowe and... Mm -hmm. Put our volume down a few octaves. Those of you who don't know, Ted Lowe is a phenomenal snooker commentator over in England. And actually got his nickname Whispering Ted Lowe because most of the time when he first started, he actually was in the room with the tournament and the players and all that. So he's in the back of the room and he had to whisper very <laughs> quietly, just so. But we really appreciate for all what he did for the game all those guys over there in England mm -hmm. helped with the, the big boom in the 80s that's really what put Snooker on the map looks like he's going to roll up on the black here good speed actually David Attenborough had a, a big impetus in the game of Snooker as color TVs were coming out in Britain and he's like why don't we play this game Snooker show off all the colors of these color TVs and then next thing you know they had a game called Pot Black which was very successful it would be a half an hour show where the players have one frame and they battle against each other in kind of a, a weekly episode tournament kind of format leading up to a winner there and then they just started to get a, a wide variety of great uh, characters in the game and uh, the drama was all around as Barry Hearn 
Did aptly name it. It was Dallas with Bowls. Yeah, Bike Garrett saying that's the shot that Daniel missed the other night uh, when he needed a black. That's true. Uh, he was actually requiring snookers at that part of the stage of the match. And instead of uh, instead of potting the black, which would have guaranteed him the seven and then eight points because of the red, and then playing the snookers off of the yellow, he didn't realize that, that he had, uh, would have lost the opportunity to pot the black and he just played safe. So he decided to roll up to the black, trying to get for snookers didn't work out he ended up missing the black entirely and there he moved the black so that is a foul should be a foul of seven points don't know if referee Mike saw that or not no I don't think he saw it so that's what's going to help out with um, getting more and more people behind the scenes so we can get markers People all invested to make sure the scoring is correct. And going back to that Daniel situation, he needed to pot that black so he would only need one snooker to win because uh, he had the black ball and the, just the point values that it was there. So I think that's just a little inexperience from Daniel mm -hmm. as he should have taken that black on yesterday, potted it, and then worried about the snooker. He was thinking, oh, I can get behind the snooker on the black, and that is correct. It would have been nice, but when you're requiring snookers, he would have needed a few more to get back in the match. So just, just knew. Showing his, uh, you know, inexperience in the game, but he's a, a great shot. He really likes to come out and play in these events so I think that young man has a, a great hist a great future in the game oh wow didn't expect that in off so we got a foul and a miss and then hit the yellow and another four point foul unfortunate there for Varun Making sure our score is right with referee Mike Dominguez. Looks good to me. 44-31. As you can see, the scoreboard in the top right part of your screen in the room. We do have plans to eventually automate the scoring. So the players are the only ones who ever keep the score, and we simply see what they're doing. And I think this yellow is on into this corner pocket. Actually, after that semifinal match, Brady was making a suggestion to me, like, possibly maybe getting some players out, and they don't have to be the referees. They can just kind of mark the ball, mark the points, and respot the balls for a match. Mm -hmm. And then if a, if a ruling comes up, they can bring over uh, the head referee of the tournament, and then they can make the ruling on that. And I think that would kind of ease the players a little bit, allowing them to kind of you know, fully concentrate on what they have to do, not uh, worry about kind of working the electronics of the scoreboard and stuff. Yeah, it definitely makes sense. I think uh, it's not a bad idea. You know, at, uh, at sign-up time, you just say, hey, you're signing up for this tournament. You have two roles. You're as a player as well as you must help us by refereeing or ball spotting for one match. I think that'd be a good idea. Help get us more help across the board. Who knows how it'll work out, but not a bad idea to try to start for the next event. Yeah, 44-33, so CC does need up to the blue. Safety oh. attempt here, not going to be what he wants. Bike Garrett on YouTube saying if you take exit it's 84. 88th off of 5-5. There's a new sticker club in the pocket club, Rochester, Washington. Yep. We had a Carl Hancock here hanging out with us on day one of this event. 
finally got to meet him, and I guess uh, he's going to be hosting a class of some sort to help train up some players over there. So go check it out if you live in the area. Yeah, our good friend Dave Daly will be down there doing a little introduction, as Carl was telling me yesterday, that there's a lot of newcomers that are coming into his club. They don't know everything about snooker, but they're they're keen enthusiasts, as his room is just snooker only. So I'm wishing you best of luck, Dave. Hopefully you can guide some new snooker players into glory, and we'll see some of their faces here at next year's championship. Oof. Very close attempt there. Just rattles the jaws and spits it back out. As these tables do for many shots. I think that... Not sure what's going on here. Question about the score or something? Yeah, the referee's word is final. You can kind of come and check with Christian about potential scoring, but if there is an issue, I don't know why he just tried to take the double. Okay. Oh, well, we came up with a pretty decent save. Mm -hmm. Hammer Smash is asking for if anybody wants to wager. We don't condone gambling on the live stream, but uh, maybe yeah, maybe we'll talk later. I don't know. <laughs> Who's I don't even know who you are, Hammer Smash. You'll have to reach out to me. Depends who you're rooting for, because I think I know who I'm rooting for in this one, but as a commentator, I have to be impartial. Not allowed to... Uh, Pick sides. As who wants to watch a, a match where someone is just uh, mm. playing favorites, right? Well, it seemed like a little bit of frustration there from Varun. Something that has jarred him a little bit. Oh, wagering Mars bars. Yeah, I'll wager a Mars bar with you for sure. Vern feels there was a discrepancy in the score. Well, maybe maybe he's thinking about the the point in which there was a seven point foul earlier in the frame. You can wow. Go back and watch the nice shot there replay. But uh, as far as I can tell, you have been correct. If any of you guys out there want to go back and watch just to make sure our scorekeeping is correct. Well, we don't have robots for everything. So there will be human error from time to time. True. And oh. a fluke there from CC. So CC should be taking this first frame of a best of nine championship final here at Ox Billiards in Seattle, Washington. Pink will make a for sure deal of it. Because Varun is coming back to the table. Rolling by 23. Does need two snookers. Mm, this is not a bad attempt here. The speed looks like it could be good. Oh. Not bad at all, yeah. yeah. If he had the line, CC would have been in trouble, but now Varun's in a bit of trouble as CC has been known to make some long pots. We've seen it before. Your CC, do you just hammer this one in? You just roll it up. I mean, the shot, I think, is to kind of just roll up to it and at least leave it in the jaws, but uh, if that affects your cueing, maybe you don't want to be necessarily doing that. Oh, another decent attempt. How's the speed That's on this one? good. Oh, wow. Just barely runs long. The audience was applauding at least a, a decent effort. Mm -hmm. 
This pink is close again. It's going back and forth, huh? Each attempt Varun takes, he's getting at least, you know, within a hand's width, maybe, of the position he wants to land on. It is just so tough when it's only one ball to play behind on a 12 by 6. <laughs> it gets really difficult. Oh, I like this. This has a good chance, actually. If not, it's going to stay in the jaws, most likely. So now a pretty yeah. risky shot for Varun. <laughs> he takes the so trick shot. A little exhibition over here or yeah. something like that. Well, CC takes that first frame. 56 to 33. And we'll be right back with frame two action. So there's how you can get involved being a part of this club at Ox Billiards. Here's some of the benefits you can get of being a member here. And those are the charges that you would incur. Great place to be. Great conditions down here. Everyone's raving about this club who have traveled near and far. The Western Washington State Snooker League. Very important for the growth of the game out here in Washington State. They were instrumental in putting this... Seattle snooker open together and the women are coming back they're headed out here to the Pacific Northwest again it was a great tournament in late summer getting close to the Labor Day weekend last year the US women's snooker the world women's snooker US Open coming back to Ox in the autumn of 2023 should be a fun event. Keep your eyes glued to Ox's webpage so you'll find updates when that tournament is going to be headed. We're all happy with our partners with the SSO and uh, the clubs that put on qualifiers, the United States Snooker Association and PAPSA governing bodies here in America, Top 147 Snooker and Billiards Lounge. They put together a qualifier and was able to uh, bring some Canadians down for this event. Empire Billiards, CC, who's at the table now. His uh, club over there, 20-minute drive from here. The National Snooker Academy, the Arizona Snooker Academy, Chicago Snooker, and Embassy Billiards will be the site of the U.S. Nationals this year. No, Ian, there's no match for third and fourth as uh, sometimes in most times in billiard sports it's an equal payout for the, the two semifinalists that unfortunately uh, lost. So it kind of works that way. Sometimes some events would have a battle for the third place prize, uh, but sometimes it just comes down to time and, and resources. So yeah, I think uh, if, if you're in the pool world, though, you do have a lot of examples of double elimination tournaments where... Uh yeah, that's a big thing um, in the pool world. You agree a lot of... That's sometimes Snooker in North America kind of dabbles a little bit with sometimes doing double elimination tournaments just because mm -hmm. the pool player will know that philosophy of how a double elimination works. Um, you know, it's just a different game, but at least they know the structure kind of of the tournament. So I know you did a little investigative work during that uh, between-frame intermission. Did you find out anything from Referee Dominguez on what was going down there, why Varun was just a little put off? Um, yeah, I guess Well, it sounds like somebody had um, looked up, uh, or somebody was in the room that had claimed that he was, um, didn't we, that we didn't mark some certain number of, uh, I think the yellow is what he said, that uh, the yellow hadn't been marked in his favor, but... Uh, 
the score system we're using uh, doesn't let us not mark the yellow in order to mark the green. Mm -hmm. So we were keeping the same score as Mike, and we double checked it, and everything seems to be all right. So I think it was just a little bit of crowd kind of interference getting in the in the head of one of the players. But uh, frames over now. Moving on to the next thing. And this one's a pretty standard break off, pretty standard, but a surprising miss from Daniel, or sorry, Daniel, uh, from, from CC here in the uh, red over this left middle pocket. Nice shot, definitely difficult queuing over those balls, stretching a little bit. Yeah, not a clear path really to come back to ball because you have that red that's just over the left middle pocket. So that's going to be mindful for Varun here. Yeah, and back to the third, fourth. Uh, yeah, in double elimination, you do get one, two, three, four, I believe. And then you have five, six tie. Seven through nine tie, I believe. Or seven through 12 tie. Or no, seven, eight tie. Nine through 12 tie, I think. Those are the stages, I think, in a double elimination that typically will have equivalent payouts. But yep, this is single elimination now in the bracket, so... It's all out there on the table, literally and, fi and figuratively. <laughs> Javier Valenzuela in the Facebook chat. Daniel had a, t a chance to take out CeCe. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of good frames. Daniel managed to take one frame off of uh, CeCe pretty decisively, and um, I think one or two frames. He definitely had the balls in his favor and had a decent chance. I think he missed probably some shots that he regrets, maybe... Or trivial uh, compared to some of the long pots he was shooting. My goodness, he was he was definitely on in that match. But yeah, like we said, the inexperience of having that uh, roll up on the black when he probably should have potted it while needing snookers. So just a few things I think. But Daniel's on the verge, I think, of becoming a pretty dangerous snooker player in these parts. Alright, so now now the red's situated more normally you could say this red is no longer over the left middle pocket, so Yeah, good cue ball there by Varun. CC with the containing safety here. Oh, it looks like he was maybe going for that or did it just roll in a funny way that he didn't expect? Sure what happened there, yeah. I thought maybe he just pace that it was in and the line it was on it was just acting for a containing safety but he hit it a little on the thinner side of that red and that kind of pushed it around and oh what a shot there wow managed to split all the reds wide open and get on the black yeah great opportunity here for Varun this could be something nice there I think is where his, uh, his pace has to stay in rhythm, in sync. Yep, for a swift player, so referee Dominguez is going to have to be on it. Can't be caught napping. He's got his work cut out for him, I think, for sure, in this match. Red is available to left middle. But the question is, does the pink pass into the bottom left corner pocket? I don't think it does. It's probably going to have to play screw back and play for blue in the middle. Oh, excellent. Wow. Stun shot. Almost managed, I think, to hook himself on this red, but he's okay. And here we go. The train is starting to leave the building. It's getting quick. Back down here on the black, gonna probably play for one of the three reds in the bunch with a screw or a stun shot going forward, stun run through. And Varun is firing all cylinders now. It's on a break of 30. With reds still 
out in the open. We'll go up and just try and disturb those two reds. Oh. Started to play, I think, sort of a stun run through, but I think he ran through maybe a little bit more than he would have liked. Still on this red, though. Not bad. I think this yellow is up, goes up into the green pocket. Just taking a look at it right now. Yeah, those straight on there. Can just draw back a little bit for the red into the middle pocket after this pink. It's a good shot there. So I think there's definitely a high break for Varun in the tournament and couldn't have come at a better time. All sort of set up from that one sort of thin cut shot into the left corner pocket that spread all these reds out into the wide open. And might not be done yet. There's still still more to be had if you can keep his tempo in check. Just looking at whether this uh maybe whether this red passes the other red. Yeah, he's taking taking a look at this red in the left part of the table. Does go, I believe, just maybe is about if any obstruction, just just a slight blockage, no more than maybe five six of a pocket or so. And that's why I wasn't taking on that red. That's right of the blue. As he was trying to get on that, uh, he knew that red ball right near that top left corner pocket could have rubbed up against his waistcoat. And obviously, that's a foul. Oh, now he's making balls like nobody's business. Yeah. I did uh, notice there was some discussion in the chat about uh, Varun's technique, but uh, from what I can tell, his technique is pretty good if he's making all these balls. Yeah, nice angle on the pink. Stun for this red just above the pink into the same pocket. So he's feeling the groove here. Pink drops. It's a break of 59 now. And I guess uh, showing us why he's another one of the finalists here in this tournament. If there was ever any doubt, I think he's showing us here what he can do. by Garrett asking this is the high break of the tournament so far. Actually not. CCU had a 78 against Brady Golan and that's frame ball there for Varun. Impressive break here though because CC with no points. And just to get another red with color as he's up 73 points with 67 on the table. It is, Hammer Smash, you're right. One visit snooker is lovely to see. Oh, 74, so another high value color would give Varun the high break of the tournament, so. Wants to be careful here. Oh. Commentator's curse, but a good round of applause there. CC concedes that frame, so Varun, he's got his first frame on, so both players are into the match. We're just getting warmed up here, 
It's tied 1-1 and a best of nine. We'll be right back with frame three. And we're back here at frame three of the 2023 Seattle Snooker Open. Great little shot there at the trophy. Is CC going to retain his title, or is Rune going to knock him off this perch and get a tournament victory onto his CV? Really nice last uh, 70 break by Varun in the previous frame. 74, right? It was awesome. 74, my apologies. Let's see if uh, how CC responds to that. Raymond, Raymond Fung in the chat, runner-up of our U.S. Snooker Nationals last year, saying uh, hi in the chat. Long time no see. Yeah, long time no see, Raymond. Let us know next time you're in town. you got to come hang out. It was awesome having you here for the U.S. Nationals. Quite the match between you and Steven. But, yeah, so far, quick frame, one visit snooker. Like I said, some folks in the chat don't think it's happened in the tournament uh, yet that we've had in the live stream, so quite impressive. We did have the 78 from CC, but that was, you know, after a kind of an arduous battle with uh, Brady, and a uh, nice pot there from CC. So, unfazed by whatever this uh, break was from Varun. But yeah, still CC holding the, holding the high break so far in the tournament. He had a 78 earlier uh, in a full clearance against uh, Brady Golan, I believe to go 3-1 up just before that mid-session interval. But uh, back in on this one. Let's see if he can give a good response. I think the key part of that frame that Varun just ran out on was the first shot, right? Yeah, definitely with that cut that he put in, he opened up the reds nicely, and then it's just uh, a shooting gallery for these uh, great players, you know, making the small compact shots. Although he did have a few mid-range shots, but it looks like those are definitely not a problem for Varun. Just wondering where the angle is here for CC, if he can come up and... So this break will be coming to a close here. See if he can get maybe behind that yellow. Oh, he poked the pink out there. Mm hmm. Let's put the pink a little safe. It's not a lot of fun, CC. I want to see some uh, good high runs, but. <laughs> fireworks. More fireworks. Let's hit this a little bit hard. A little pacey. Yeah, Varun doesn't mind just opening up these reds, that's for sure. 
sooner than later. Kind of what Stephen Hendry used to do. He wanted to open up those reds at the first chance he could get and then just score heavily, and he did it with great success. Seven times world champion. He's kind of tempted CC into some mid-red shots. Yeah, some shenaniganry, as I like to call it. These are the shots that kind of get you in trouble if you don't know when to take them, right? But he might be just coming off the left side of that red to the left of the black. Come off two cushions and probably maybe even a third and a fourth to be onto that green. Oh, oh wow, went in off. That's but the one trouble with that shot. Managed to collide that red into some other balls. Fortunately, not leaving a ball close to the bulk string, the head string, I mean. None of the reds came up back up to bulk, so still nothing easy. Just got to make a long pot on this. But Varun is known to knock these in. And why not? Yeah. You know, it's early on. It's 1-1. One, one. There's a lot of snooker ahead of us. I don't, I, I don't mind some of these players just going for those, the chances and stuff like that. Because most of the time, we're not seeing a lot of uh, one-table visit snookers, matches and stuff like that on the amateur scene. So I think if you early on, if you got a got the confidence, you know, and that long pod's going to build up Varun's confidence by making it, so. Yeah, definitely. He's in rhythm, he's flowing. This is mm -hmm. the kind of uh, kind of match that he wants to be playing. Whereas if we're playing in a much more tactical snookering battle, I feel like it definitely favors CeCe's style and game. Oh, Wow. <laughs> I would totally agree on that, yeah. Like, Varun seems a guy, he wants to get on with the business, he wants to get into the balls, he wants to create that rhythm, get a high break. He's getting, sometimes, as we've seen, that he gets down on the shot quite quickly, so he feels like he can't be bothered sometimes to just think, uh, think everything through. Whereas CC, you know, has played the game for numerous years and knows that definitely there is that element of potting balls, but sometimes you've got to take your medicine and play a little bit more tactical. Mm, Chu Cheng Chao asking, will there be a first century of the tournament tonight? I don't know. We'll see. But both players have gotten close. They're three-quarter century marks for sure. Yeah, we do have Bernie's best in this tournament. If there is a player that makes a century, I will pay them 100 Canadian dollars. Canadian dollars. Yes. Kind of getting a little worried, little worried in that last frame as Varun was making me nervous. Pray on. It's a, it's, it is a good point. Don't judge a player's cue action by how it looks. Judge by the results. That could be said about uh, the late great Alex Higgins. That's for sure. Most coaches uh, and managers and instructors will probably say this is uh, everything wrong you should do because Alex <laughs> was twitching and jerking all the way on the shots. I know, Hammer Smash, you're thinking our Canadian money might be like Monopoly because it has a different colors for the denominations, but that's pretty much global. I think Mer America is the only country that has the same color currency for well. all their... Uh, Denominations. Yeah, but more recently, I think they're starting to at least change the tint of the type of green you see. So, I think, like for example, the the hundred dollar bill has a little bit of blue to add it to it now. The ten dollar bill is a little bit more yellow, maybe orangish. The definitely the green green is the five dollar bill, and the twenty is a little bit blue as well. But yeah, definitely all kind of the same shades of green, you could say. This one is dark green. This one's light green. Exactly. Mostly dark green. 
See, now you're speaking my language. End of break there. Solid 24 from CC. The safety. I'm <laughs> showing the support for the Canadians. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, Graham, I think there's only one Canadian left uh, involved in this tournament, well, shall we say. Yeah. And it's yours <laughs> truly talking to you. So. And he's in the booth. Um, Maybe we should have a, a commentary battle at the same time as the players are having a uh, literal battle on the on the bays. How would we do it? Um, maybe come the best use of Shakespearean language. Come up with the best tongue twister. Say something five times fast. Oh, look at this double. It's got a chance. Nope. Plays it with a bit of safety, though. Yeah, Hammer Smash. I also wonder who... There's shooting and wondering who Hammer Smash is. I have a feeling I know who it is, but not necessarily sure I will say. If I had to guess, there's definitely one person in mind, but... Uh, Forty to ten, so thirty point difference. <laughs> Yeah, he knows it too. He says your feeling is quite right, hundred <laughs> percent. Can I get five? Can I get four out of five spotted blues, please? Well, only he would know that joke. So nice safety again. Just have to play a containing safety. <laughs> just to hit the, the cue ball, or use the cue ball to hit that red in the open on the right, just on the right side. Yeah. Oh, I see. This is how we could battle. Yeah, Xu Cheng brings up a good point. Uh, if we do a battle of the commentators, uh, I'll just have to do every commentary with uh, pool references instead of snooker references everywhere. Maybe that'll throw us throw us for a loop. It was interesting. I was having a debate with the, the streaming audience during the BC Open. And there is obviously snooker language. But in North America, a lot of, a lot of people do play pool. That's how they got into the Q sports. And it's wondering, you know, I was asking, what do what do people want to hear? Do they, you know, want to get to learn the the snooker language for verbiage, like a double or a plant, rather than a combo and a bank shot? Uh -huh. So it's interesting. It's up for debate. Yeah, Dave Daly's saying commentary battle. Best use of repeat references. Talking about getting the DeLorean there. Someone might need a time machine. Yeah, that's not a bad one either. Although I think Dave Bernie has me beat in terms of the reference department. Apologies, but there's, there are times where I'm I'm a little bit lost and I don't even know what, the, what we're referring to. <laughs> the game of snooker, that's what we're referring oh, to. Oh, of course. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Mm-hmm. When I play Seattle Open, uh, I would like like it if I could go have John Virgo commentate with all my blunders as Bike Garrett on YouTube. Yeah, John Virgo would be quite uh, quite the man to have in the booth. You did manage to have uh, Jeremy Jones up in the booth here last year uh, for an exhibition match with Daniel uh, on the pool side of things. That was a fun fun time. Jeremy Jones, the soothing Texas draw. Wow, an aggressive shot there. Almost potted it, rattled it. 
on both corner pockets and manages not to sell out. There you go. Pool term, sell out. Yeah, I didn't mind that. I was looking at that just before CC took it. You know, hindsight being twenty twenty, but it's like if he takes this on, I don't think he's going to leave anything. So, Varun might have an opportunity here for that uh, red that's closest to the pink spot. Could have a shot to nothing. Oh wow, what a pot! It's a shot to something. That's true, but it's going to get on anything. Lovely oh. blue. Yeah, blue into the corner. He's been knocking these in. Pretty effectively so far. Mm. These balls are in a nice position. Just got to be mindful of that pink that he's queuing over. He doesn't like it at all. I don't think uh, Vern is a big fan of the rest as well. Yeah, I think he still still uses the rest effectively enough, though. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of pool players are obviously they complain about the rest bringing that up as much as you don't see it as often but with these 6 foot by 12 foot tables you have to know that there is going to be some point that you are going to be using the rest so you have to learn and embrace it Yep. Uh, our good friend up in Canada Gary Spence actually was playing a match and Bill Wervenick the great Canadian player watched him and was after the fact, he said, Gary, you are the worst rest player I have ever seen. Come <laughs> with me. And they played a frame of snooker every shot they used the rest. There you go. So not a bad, actually, practice uh, routine for anyone out there that wants to improve their rest game. Just no, play definitely. one frame with that rest because you're going to need it. You know, it's just it's what snooker is all about, all the true. gadgets and toys. Even uh, yeah, Daniel... Sardon Cilio. He's, oh, yeah. He's uh, a definitely a, a tall youngster, but still, from time to time, he needs the rest. Well, he also was opting to shoot the behind-the-back shot a little bit more often than you would see a normal snooker player traditionally go for. Yeah, I think that's the first time I've ever seen the behind-the-back shot in snooker. Yeah, pray on. There will be a mid-session interval at the conclusion of the fourth frame. So it's a, just a little mini-session here. You'd like to... Uh, hopefully you can win it. Yeah, after, after the first four frames, we have the mid-session interval. Um, I believe it's going to be a 10-minute break, and we might have another break... If we get to, to a decider, from what I understand. But we'll see. Wide open tables is Xu Cheng, but uh, yeah, I think fortunately got a little bit out of line, so that break ended early from CC. Now we're probably going to see some safeties. Oh, never mind. Talking about safeties. Varun rolling that red into the pocket. It was kind of a dangerous shot because if he would have missed that on the near jaw, it definitely would have left a pot on for CC based on where the cue ball ended up now. Yep, good angle on the green. This is looking good, Varun. Channel that frame two action. It's so wild how this funny game works. You have Varun here that in the qualifier lost to Charlie Brown, but then you have Charlie Brown in this tournament was defeated by Brady Golan. <laughs> True. And Brady's not in the final. It just defeated by CC. <laughs> <laughs> And now Varun trying to defeat CC could could be a uh, I think uh, we used to call this in circle uh, in, in circle in in college we used to call this the uh, the circle of suck. <laughs> we used to find uh, every every team in our college conference and find the team that they had beaten and build a full circle so that everybody had beaten every other team and so it came around so nobody nobody was undefeated effectively. Hmm. It's kind of a fun. Uh, Interesting. Fun little yeah, chart to build every year. I think we're going to want it to be a bit higher on that, but... Uh-oh. It's going to get fortunate on this bump, I think, though. Oh, no, he's shooting for a color next. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind. He's poised to come down on to that black. Going to have to take yellow now, I think. Maybe blue. It's going to need a good pot to continue the break. 
Mindful of the pink that he's queuing over. It's a good shot. Ran a little farther maybe than he wanted to. But still somewhat in position. Yeah, it's got options. He's got a couple of reds there, so... I think, yeah, I did run a little bit... Oh! Uh-oh, here's the mistake. Is he going to leave a red on for CC? Nothing trivial. But definitely both players playing pretty offensively. All gas, no brakes, as someone was saying in the chat. Yeah, and I think that's what they should be doing. You know, it's good to do that. Get, get the arm going, you know. Now, granted, if you were trailing 3 nothing going into the final frame before the mid-session interval, maybe that might not be the thing to do, but... Well, nice pot there from CC, but just that flick off the other red slowed the cue ball down just enough to not give him position. Yeah, I think it'll just trickle up to this black. Yeah, he's Looks got close. the snooker. Yeah, full snooker on both balls. Although this one on the right part of the table is probably a lot easier to hit off of one cushion. We're going to see it go quick. There's that Stephen Hendry follow through where he points the cue up into the sky somewhat slightly and almost punches the whole body forward. There's not Stephen, uh, sorry, Alex Higgins style, not Stephen Hendry. Kind of throwing the body into the queue. Uh, you see that from Varun typically when he does uh, these, these kick shots. You know, the tough part with those aggressive escapes that he has, he's throwing balls all over the place and you just never know what's going to happen. Yeah. More often than not, when balls are flying all over the place, a lot of wrong things can happen for you. Yeah, it's so a, little, a little bit of a roll the dice. I kind of wouldn't mind seeing if he had a bit more controlled escape plan. Uh-oh. That's trouble. I thought he might go two cushions to get near the green. Off that red. And now he's... Uh, might not CC's like his next shot at the table. No, cc has got a... Great opportunity if he just stuns into this red. The red comes off the cushion and just goes down the table. So pretty good chance that the snooker is going to be there behind the yellow. How's his line? It's pretty close. I think you can see this red, at least maybe the right edge of the red. It's my pot, I'm not sure. Just we have a kind of table view almost down at table level. You might be able to tell about this red, but yeah, I think it's fully on. Oh no, and he rattled it. Was there good? Good try by Varun. But this red just off the cushion, so I think it's definitely potable. Yeah, Bruin makes it exciting. He does go for the shots, that's for sure. You know, you think trailing by 15, he might just clamp up a little, but... but I think he realizes this is how he has... The, the way he's going to win this match is by doing exactly that, going for the shots and executing. Don't know that he wants to be stuck into a tactical battle with CC because I think he's been there, done that. Then wants none of it. He'd rather smash the frame open try to get as many points on the board as possible and score big. Oh, uncharacteristic miss from CeCe there. A little bit of maybe an elevated queuing from the rail, not sure. Sixteen difference, thirty-five remaining, so still anyone's frame. How do you hit it? 
Uh oh. Think he's okay. Yeah, I might just be far enough past the jaws of the pocket. Mm hmm. What do you think, Cece? Go up and down the table? <laughs> Go off a couple cushions, take the bolt cushion and the left cushion and this graze that red in? Sean Murphy shot? Mm hmm. Oh, it was on. Okay. Yeah, he let it slide in. All right, he was kind of deceived us, but he just ran a little far. Yeah, needs a woolly mammoth bounce there to come back up. Hey, Brian, thank you for the nice comments. Just, you know, it's appreciative of uh, the work that all we do behind the scenes. As, uh, Snooker was quite quiet for a little bit in Canada, and uh, we're seeing a a rebirth in it, and we are on the doorstep of the birth of it in America. So, good to see you for the North America. I think uh, if uh, our pro tour brotherhood over there could uh, get an actual tour event stop here in North America, whether it's Canada or America, that would just do wonders. That would really inspire people, you know, get a really done classy event. Maybe you could work out some kind of discount with schools. Maybe student ticking, ticketing prices could happen. So then you can get the youngsters to come and take a look and probably be uh, pulling on mom or dad's shirt, being like, yeah. I want one of those things. Can I get a cue for Christmas? Ooh, and odd, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, excellent long brown from Cece there, though. It's quite the shot. <laughs> and yellow. Looks like he's got a... 23 lead. There's yeah. 25 still on the table, so... Green is frame ball. Didn't look like he had enough of the green to pot it, so... Kind of a two-way there. Wasn't really going to be playing position for the brown. And that pink's in a tough position, too, for Varun. sure Mike had the score right. It looks like he just accidentally put the yellow on the wrong person, but uh, all settled. 57-34. Not quite snooker required stage and just gets past that middle pocket. Oh, look who's joined us on the Facebook chat. Mr. Daniel Sardincilio says, hey yo, how's it going, Daniel? Fortunately, Daniel wasn't able to best CC in their match. Came pretty close. So far, I think uh, the player has given CeCe the biggest run for his money, other than Brady Golan. Those two matches were definitely highlights of the tournament, I would say. And, I mean, when it comes to uh, when it comes to highlight reel shots in terms of ball pocketing, the award might have to go to Daniel for this tournament, uh, just in terms of sheer quantity of outrageous long pots that he had. Looks like he's got the snooker here. But uh, yeah, Mike's going to go out there and mark it just to make sure it's a clean respot. <laughs> Daniel's saying, I don't think I slept that night. Yeah, there was a couple of mistakes, but I think, uh, I think that's all it takes, right? A few mistakes like that, then you're going to know better next time. And uh, I can bet you're not going to make the same mistakes again. Yeah, Mike Garrett saying in YouTube saying both players seem to get getting in stroke more comfortable. Yeah, I believe so. Seems like both players playing pretty strong. As we know they can. Oh, look at this. So it's rolled a little far. Yeah, good hook. There we go. Although a commentator like Jeremy Jones is always talking about snickering someone on the ball. As opposed to hooking them on the ball. I mean, he says hooking a lot, too. I feel like hooking comes from the pool world. I could be wrong. Or the street. Or the street, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, Same thing. I think CC's going to grab those redwoods and just come off 
the left side of the screen and hopefully get nice and tight to the brown. So it looks like uh, this green does pot, right? I know these tables do have the long rests. I guess just some of these players are a bit more comfortable with using the cross because I think it's a crown for the long rests that you yes. guys have here. Uh huh. And I think actually those long rest crowns, uh, I don't enjoy them as much. I guess the, the spider is the true kind of crown where the the slots where the Q uh, lands in and is a true V shape. Uh, there are sort of the, the parts of the rests where, like for example, the the, the goose there's the swan neck I think actually um, has more of a U shape, so the Q kind of rests in a channel and doesn't really stay on line all the time. Uh, it just kind of depends on the equipment you're using, but yeah, I agree. I like using the the cross. Sometimes a little bit more. Angled. Yeah, angled is the uh, the term for when you uh, point hook someone, right? Uh, an angle hook is when you're in the jaws. Yeah, so you point hook yeah. them or you, uh, or you, quote, titty hook them. Don't know these terms. They sound nope. maybe poolish. Yeah, they are poolish. Oh, look at this speed. Oh, it's gone a little far. Wow. A good one, uh, Hammer Smash saying pool greater than snooker changed my mind. How about it, Dave Bernie? How about it? It's fantastic. You know, you got to be on offense and defense in this game all the time, uh, got to keep your head in it. It's a lot of concentration that's needed. You know, sometimes you might just get lost in putting pots on, you get unfortunate kisses like that. Yeah, sorry, part of my French, <laughs> Dave. Um, but uh, left the uh, green into the middle. This could be, this is frame ball, right? Dang, Daniel starting Celio saying snooker greater than pool. Here we go. We're starting the debate. I just think they're different. That's all. <laughs> they are different, yep. Like there's a different mindset. Going into a pool, eight ball, nine ball kind of game, you're more playing aggressive. And I think uh, with the snooker mindset, you are leaning more towards safety play. So they're different beasts, but um, you know, so is painting with watercolors and painting with oils. There you go. Great analogy. Like I said, the other one I like is um, shooting darts on a dartboard and shooting arrows onto a archery range so that's the concession there CC takes frame 3 we have a score line of 75 to 34 we have one frame coming up before the mid-session interval will CC extend his lead to 3-1 or will be tied at 2 at that point we'll have to find out when frame 4 comes up momentarily
And we're back here with frame four action just about to kick off here. There's a lovely shot at the trophy for the winner of this Seattle Snooker Open. Just getting into the middle of it, see if anyone, see if CZ can start pulling away. And uh, our referee is just excusing himself for a short comfort break. I do like uh, seeing that Daniel is leaning towards more snooker than pool. I think, Daniel, if you just get your mind wrapped down a little bit more of some of the snooker idi idiosyncrasies and stuff, I think you're going to be very effective because you definitely know how to pot some balls. But then when you f see the tactical side of snooker and you know being able to know where the score is and what you need to do, I think that will help you tremendously. And that just comes with time. An education, so. Well, Hammer Smash in the chat saying the, to tell Daniel that uh, coin flips greater than pool and snooker. So get ready for your coin flips, Daniel. It's, it's coming for you. I don't mind that philosophy. The first BC Open I ever played in, actually, I was undefeated in coin tosses. There you go. Lost every match. But still, undefeated. So, Got to take away the positives. 100%. Yep, that makes sense. And do a little walk through some of their stuff. Come join Ox membership. We got a cool set of uh, perks. Main one being you get 24 hour access to the club. We've got a uh, Washington Snooker League new season coming up. We're gonna have an open meeting in April to talk about uh, new things coming up in the Seattle um, area snooker leagues. We do possibly have a couple of uh, maybe maybe a new league happening down in Rochester we'll see I don't know um, beginner division uh, beginner division advanced divisions uh, figuring out if we're going to be playing at Empire there's a lot of good stuff coming up and this is what helps power the Seattle Snooker Open so come support the WSL and the big event coming up later this year we're going to be hosting the US Women's Snooker Open for WWS coming back to Ox Billiards for the second year in a row coming this fall we'll have more info on our socials coming up and looks like we're ready to get started now we have room to break off frame number four good break yeah probably the best that we've uh, seen all day well, I think CC's going to want to have to put his cue ball tight to the top cushion I don't know if there's a pathway for him to run back to bulk. Might just come out the cushions and just land ever so delicately onto the bunch of reds. And just misses the pink. Nicely done. Just Rolls up. And touching ball has been awarded by referee Dominguez. So in this situation, Varun can shoot away. If that red ball does move that he is touching, then it would be a foul. Can he get behind the yellow? Uh, a little bit pacey. Would have been a nice snooker for Varun there. In off once again. We saw this in the last frame as well. A little bit less pacey of a shot, but uh, now it looks like most available is this red to the left corner pocket. I'd imagine. Yep, black's not really tied up, so one good long pot could put Varun in great position here. Uh oh. I'll cut that some distance but uh, the fact that he did is what helped get this cue ball back up into bulk so got a good run of the balls there yeah, slim, thin slick right here come off the two cushions maybe get behind that brown 
with the pace, but Oh, Ian Dawson saying we're doing a decent job at describing the intricacies of the chess like game. Yeah, it's all it's all David Burney. He's the master of the craft. Do I have to break out my wallet now? Hey now. <laughs> this is why we brought you here. What do you mean? Oh, and of course, because of the stocks. That's that's the other thing. Yes. Sock battle is always high. Top notch sock game. Mm hmm. I'm going to teach you uh, Yankees about it a bit. Yeah, I'm going to have to start investing in some quality sockware. This one's got to pull up. Just does well. It's like Javier Valenzuela also talking about a couple of instances in Daniel's game. You guys can go back and watch that on uh, yesterday's live stream. During the round of 16... Daniel drew against uh, CC. Or sorry, it was the uh, quarterfinals, actually. Yeah, quarterfinals was CC and Daniel here on the TV table, and that was quite the match. Daniel put up good showing, but uh, CC got the best of him. Showing us why he's here in the finals. Wow. wow. Plant was there, huh? Watch out, cue ball. Gonna hit the cushions and rattle. He's okay. So the plant was on. Yeah, he knew it. He saw it. Made a nice combo there. Oh, no. <laughs> Hand raised to the fluke there, so he knew what he was doing. He eyed it. Got down on it quick. I didn't see if I. It was there. He's just all of a sudden down on the shot. Yeah. But now I'm just gonna play safe. Oh, well, glad to have you here, Bike Garrett. Says he's off to work. Gonna pause and finish later. Thanks for tuning in. Look at that green. Wow. But as he snookered himself. Kind of tough, yeah. Because those two reds near the right cushion... You know, you clip off the top one, you're going to can it into some reds on the way through. It's just a, you mu it's a must. And yeah, I don't know if we can see any other angles. Yeah, it's tough to say sometimes by the camera angle that we have. We don't have every angle in the room. CC's got the best vantage point, so has it been, has it been forced into trying this pot, this long pot? Yeah, I think so. He did kind of cut it a little, like a, a lot more on the right side, so I wonder if he was just trying to get through, come off the ball and get through sort of the stack in some way, but uh, now he's left Varun an opening. First big mistake in this frame. Pretty straight in pot, and I think the black goes to the left corner pocket based on his vantage point. And if it does, it definitely is a good opportunity here but uh, the only problem is that the black most likely is covered by this red on the black spot so I think it's going to have to spot all the way up table by the brown he takes it on oh he wanted to come back for the pink actually yeah I think that is the right shot play for pink clear up that red later on in the in the break and then you can come back for black but Overran the position, I guess, now. Just gonna take this thin black and play up to bulk. Uh oh, this Ooh. could be disaster. A little too thin there. Yeah, he's left an opening for CC now with that red by the pink. I don't know why he, Varun used so much pace to suck that ball back so much, making that black just that m much more difficult. Oh, he went forward to bump the pink. Interesting choice. I guess he wants to go for the black, and now the black would respot on the pink spot. So maybe some next level. Yeah, interesting because that, you know, I thought he was going to draw back a little bit for the pink in that same pocket with that red. 
then he could draw back on the pink and take the red that's on the black spot and then he might have been able to with the angle that he had on that red that's on the black spot maybe get onto the potting angle of the black or draw it back for the pink but yeah i thought drawback for the pink was the simplest yeah Nonetheless, CC is, uh, he's got the high-valued balls where he wants them because there's lots of reds around, lots of opportunity. He's playing forward for blue here. Oh, just a little pacey. Got to be quite precise when you're shooting those into the middles at that angle. So a big miss here. Needs another big opportunity for Varun. Yeah, Varun got let off there, that's for sure. Plenty of reds out in the open. This is the frame that he wants to play. Can he keep his cool and keep his composure? Keep his rhythm? He hasn't fired away yet, which tells me he is being a little bit more composed than he was previously. But that composure is not what got him the 74 break, so... Gotta find the balance. Very nice, just have to roll that in, pocket weight. The only thing now, if he takes this black and doesn't disturb that red on the black spot, this black is going to come all the way back up to the brown spot, so it looks like it's going to be a oh lot no, of pink. pinks now. Oh, yes, that's right, the pink spot. My apologies. So, actually, Varun is all right. Oh, if it takes pink now, though. Now that's going to go way up table. But there are a few reds floating around there, but... Oh, has he come short here? Uh-oh. Yeah. Just see with his body language just after the shot he knew it and just deflated all the energy in his body. So what could have been a substantial break I think is going to be coming to a close here unless Varun can really make a great shot here on this red because does it, I don't know if it passes that red that's near the black spot or is he trying to plant? That would be crazy. Oh, let's see the angles there. Yep. I can try to cut it. Oh, he's gotten fortunate how these reds have laid up all closer in the bottom. Didn't really leave a shot up here. Now, the one I'm wondering is uh, the two reds up table. If you can see a full ball, the one right really close to the pink, this could be an opportunity for a decent snooker attempt. Even if he doesn't see full ball, if he can see maybe three quarters of it, he could roll forward and push the red up, up table past the middles. It's gonna cover this red near the blue is all. Brown could be a big, big wall here. Oh, he's playing the shot, and is it gonna get away with it? Nope. Sold out the farm. Yeah, left an easy starter here for Varun. You can't be giving him too many chances like this, CC, or you're going to get burned. It's got a nice angle to run through. It's red. Be on a good side of the blue, maybe come off the cushion. Oh, I can just a stun, get the angle on the green to come back down table. Oh, I think he's on this, uh, these two reds right here. 
could be crucial. This is what could help him build up a break. Oh, he hit that thick. And he knows he missed a big opportunity there. Yeah, it seems like it's coming down to who's just going to be the better potter. I've seen a lot of both these players have been taking their chances, and just not making their pots. And unfortunately, they're leaving their opponent in. So I think whoever can capitalize on those missed shots of their opponents is going to be the one that's going to hoist that trophy. Oh, he's pretty, pretty straight on the pink, but has a slight angle to come down into these reds, possibly. Yeah, Javier is saying it's crazy how the strategies change uh, between these two versus the last two players they played. Yeah, I think uh, Varun and CC have a little bit of a history, so I think they know how each other play and are trying to maybe throw the other person off their game or something. Yeah, CC looks exhausted. Brady, uh, Brady and Daniel took a lot out of him. Wouldn't be surprised if Rune comes back and takes the best of him. Yeah, I, I have to say Rune's probably also a little exhausted as well. Takes a lot to play in these snooker frames, but look at that shot there. It's authoritatively pots that red clean into the corner. Past the green. Yeah, Varun had to go through Ross Bradson and Pratamish Sawant. So, both players did have to battle a lot. Don't know where you throw the advantage there. But they were both done their semifinals rather quickly, so there was a little longer of a gap between the semifinals and finals. So, both should be rested and ready to go. And CC's been in this position before. He's won this tournament. He's been in finals a lot of the time. Yeah, even though CC might look exhausted, like you said, the experience. Mm -hmm. He knows what to do to win, where this seems probably foreign territory for Varun. He's, he's won a lot of pool tournaments, I believe. Yes, Varun. yep. But not many in the snooker world. Now Varun did win the qual or no, he got second in the qualifier to uh Charlie Brown, I believe. Correct, yes. He did get second place last year's Seattle Snooker Opens. So. Yeah, so he's had some success on the on the snooker table, but uh yeah, not quite the uh champion, so to speak, that CC is starting to become, right? Yep, Varun might just be a bridesmaid, never a bride. <laughs> well I'll see. This one's not over yet. Two to one in favor of CC. He needs three more frames to win this championship. Ooh, this could be good. Is it behind the brown? Oof, just barely. Close. He's going to go for one of these. Screw back. Wow, what a shot. Jeez, no kidding. Wow, Vern is... He's going for the jugular there. He's not really caring that... Uh, he misses. Maybe he's found a little kink in the armor of CC. CC, as Javier has pointed out on the stream, might just look a little tired. And maybe Varun's picking up on that a bit. The black does spot there, pretty cleanly, but uh, definitely makes a little bit of a mess of things. Now, I don't think Varun can take the red that's closest to the pink. His only option really offensively is to take the right red or the left red. The bottom left corner pocket, but he's going to play safe. Does he have enough? It's going to be a little bit short, I think. Not, not too bad, but... Oh, yeah, he went for that one for sure. Watch out, cue ball. It's going to be okay. A decent shot to nothing there for CC. Knew he was at the angle. He was going to bring, be bringing the white ball back into the ball count. Mm. 
All right, so we're back to a tactical game. Now Vroon with a decent lead. 25 points, but plenty of reds available. I think this is the type of frame that CC wants to play, though. He's willing to take on the tough snooker attempts. Excellent at breaking through snookers, typically. What's that red right on the cushion? Oh, he went for it. I think there might have been a little gap there because the philosophy, obviously, if you ever have your object ball tight to a cushion, you want to have your cue ball hit ball and cushion at the exact same time, and that will just make that object ball just hug the cushion all the way till it finds a safe place in the bottom of the pocket. Wow, nice pot there, and he's going to get high on the black. Oh, he looks fairly straight, but maybe a little bit of angle to run into this red-pink combo. Nope, just rolling forward. Yeah, that's the right shot, I guess. What am I saying? It's going to roll forward, make the red into the right corner, and then open up the pink and black. Yeah, he's going to run through with this one, too. He's going to avoid that red, which he did. Very nice. So Vern has learned something from last year's championship. He's not going quietly. You know, he's put a frame on the board. That's a lot more than he did last year, and he could be sending us to a tie into the mid-session interval. Oh, big miss. Uh-oh. He knew it too. Shaking the cue. Commentator's <laughs> curse possibly strikes again. So now 41 points, 51 on the table. CZ not out of it, especially if he gets this red-black here. That's what you have to be a little bit mindful, and CC will be well aware. I think that's uh, one thing that kind of uh, hooked up our little friend. Well, not our little friend, he's a tall drink of water. Daniel Sardancilio. Just always be in mainframe, you know. No one's rushing you to get through anything. You always can take a step back and just... Take a breath, look at the scoreboard, do the arithmetic in your mind, work it all out. But now CeCe's in a bit of bother. Is he going to take on this? Yeah, I've been saying the last two reds are in a tough spot to make a run. CC has known to make one of these before. Wow. He really just needed one of those reds and the black to get the 35. So he's 34 behind, but there's 43 remaining. One more red-black would have at least given him the option for them to play safety on the last red. Oh, and a big miss there. This this could be pretty crucial. But if CC can make red color, he still stays within striking distance with the, what's remaining. And with one red on the table, he gets first attempt at laying down a tough snooker on the last red, so... Pretty big shot for Rune to miss. He's going for this one. Is he going to hit the pink? He's not landed nicely, but uh, does have a natural snooker here. Would have liked to land on, I mean, he can cut this pink, but I would have liked to land nicely on a color. That way he could guarantee the points. It's kind of what happened in Daniel's match, too, with uh, when you make a red you kind of unlock the ability to pot a, uh, a color, but you can only take advantage of that color pot ability the moment you're on that ball. Looks like it's going to take this black on as a result. Yep. Oh, and how'd he hit it? How'd he hit it, folks? It's doing all right. 25 in and 35 on the table. Now that red does look tight to that cushion. Yeah, but... So is it on command that he's going to use that philosophy I was just talking about moments ago? Now CC doesn't actually have to worry about making this red. Oh, big miss. It's a big foul there. This could yeah. be curtains. Mm -hmm. And that red has popped out. Since he's lucky it rolled a little bit more. If it had pulled up a bit, it would have been a bit more easier for Varun. Should make this, but... Uh-oh. There you go. See, they're not easy. 
Can't take anything for granted on these tables. CC gets another chance, another crack at this frame. But now he needs this red and a color to stay in the frame. Whereas previously he could have still came back uh, with just the colors. So now he's not going to take this lightly. It's in a decent position to get red-black here, or red-blue red, red blue even. The way the yellow sits, it's actually a you know, prime spot for laying a tough snooker. So, yeah, not a bad idea. Could even take, I guess, green into the middle. Or brown. He's got a lot of options. True, even the yellow. But he definitely needs a color here, because uh, 29 down. If he were to miss this, he'd be... What, 20, yeah, 28 down? Yeah, important shot there, but uh, had he not taken the green and played safe and said he would have lost the ability to pot a color there and actually would have hurt himself, or hurt his cause by leaving, wasting points that were available on, on the table. But now he's back in on colors. See yellow passes, I believe. This would be quite a steal here. And it's all there for CC. You know, it's going to be a, a big shot from pink to blue, or blue to pink. Yeah, but where the pink is, you have a decent chance to lay a nasty snooker if you don't get on the on the pink nicely. Yeah, Javier saying they struggled badly in the side pockets. They're not fun. Definitely, they get really, really tight. Even though they look larger, they... Uh, they're tight on this angle. Wasting color, says Daniel. <laughs> yeah, brought the mesh. The clearance is on. Oh, he's ended up too far on this blue. Uh-oh. Yep. Just didn't get on the right angle of the blue. Yeah, bows his head down. Unfortunate there, because that could have been... Well, as you said, if he can just delicately roll through this blue, there could be an angle on that black or on the pink to get the snooker behind the black so unfortunately he didn't get there, he just gotta regroup yeah, kind of like just stunning this, playing it long and playing the snooker attempt behind the black that that type of shot could also easily win you the frame just as just as well I think I would have liked to roll forward a little bit more instead of screwing back. Just because he could have played more of a stop shot um, on the pink as opposed to now he kind of has to delicately touch it and either thin off the edge or play the one cushion. Yep, and he's going to leave this possibly. Small bounce. It's potable. It is, yeah. It's got too much of a bounce there. If it pulled up a little sooner have been a lot tougher for Varun. Could have been easier as well, so... Just to take this fourth frame. Wow. Yep. Great and pot he there. Sinks it. So that's a concession there. So we are tied 2-2. A whole new ball game. So when we come back from the mid-session interval, it will be a race to three, as this is a best of nine. Both players have two frames. It'll be a ten-minute break. So we'll see you back here at about quarter after eight Pacific Standard Time. Feel free to get yourself a cool drink or something to nibble on, and we'll be right back.
Welcome back everybody, I hope you got a nice cool drink in front of you and you're ready to see us to the end here. It's tied two frames apiece in this best of nine final of the Seattle Snooker Open 2023. David Burney's in the booth with you along with Christian Youngers. We have referee Dominguez gathering everybody, calming down all the fans and getting us ready to take it home to see who will be the champ. Will CC retain his crown? Or Varun, who's looked very impressive, better than last year, wanting to get his hands on that lovely trophy. There's a nice shot of it, too. That's what the winner will be hoisting in the air, pressing his lips against it to kiss and give it some good luck. So let's see how CC can rebound. Won't be surprised if this frame kind of uh, someone tries to go for it and get into the balls a lot. So it's kind of a it's a good one to get after get on after the uh, mid session, but uh, <coughs> you still need to win three. So this one could be a little bit more free fro flowing. Yeah, this is thing. this is effectively now a uh, what you would call a semifinal match. Or no, sorry, a quarter final matches were. Best of five, from what I remember, right? Yes, round of 16 and quarterfinals were best yeah. of five. But so we'll see. It's going to be, I feel like it's going to start to get tense. So this is the most most frames that CC's lost in the Seattle Open since its inception. Long pot there for Varun to get started right away off of this one. Both the split of the rack, though, might have left one red into the right middle. And that's a bit unfortunate. Yeah. I think he didn't quite control his cue ball. Yeah, when you're going into the pack, you never know. And he just went in with a lot of force, that's for sure. But, yeah, like, that's a, that's a thin and tough cut on that red that's to the right of the black into the middle pocket. Mm -hmm. And I think the red that's above the pink, he can't get any angle on that. Yeah, probably should just play the safe up table. Mm -hmm. Try to lay him on the bulk cushion behind the brown somewhere. But you know, if you risk that red. Oh, let me split the pack open a bit. You digging this on if you're CC? Yeah, why not? You know, you take it on. Gives you some confidence. Just wondering, like... Mmm, nice pot. Nice pot, but unfortunate to roll into that other red. Two long shots back-to-back -back from each one from each player. Yeah, if he hit that red more fuller, it would have stopped this cue ball from running to the top cushion and made this black a lot easier. But we've seen CC being able to put these blind cuts in. And he had that perfect channel for the cue ball, and the black is going to hold up. Oh, wow. That gap between the reds, there's a, there's a big kind of window there, and the cue ball went perfectly through there. And I wonder if he was just focusing on getting the cue ball safe more than anything and just... Happened to cut it a little bit too thick. Yeah, it's amazing how many snooker players are wanting that big earthquake to come. <laughs> definitely CC needed it right there. A little tremor probably would have made that black drop into the pocket. So Yeah, something of a Happy Gilmore instance, you could say. Or not Happy Gilmore, sorry, uh, Caddyshack instance. Cause that's the reference. I'm already losing at the commentary battle. It wasn't really a reference to Caddyshack or anything. Just a an earthquake, you know, will make the tremors happen. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's a reference. Wasn't there a movie called Earthquake? Maybe. There's a video game called Quake, I think. Mm-hmm. First-person shooter. There oh, caught the jaw there. He's fortunate not to leave a pot to the left. 
corner. This black is going to block up this pocket. We're going to see a long tactical frame here with this right corner pocket blocked up. It could get messy, yeah, if they start pushing a lot of the balls to the right side of the table. Oh, it was a little risky, but good line. I think there is the shot there that uh, the two reds that are on the top cushion, the one on the right, CC, it's on the right side. I think he'll have the angle to get two cushions and come back up table, but not offering that one. Uh oh, ran into the stack pretty full. Oh, he's gotten really low, glued to this cushion. There's a thin cut to the left corner pocket and maybe a little bit higher percentage of a pot into the left middle pocket. Question is leaving a shot at the the black. There's that green as well that is close to the middle pocket. Uh oh. Uh oh. This is an opening. Yeah, I think if you're CC, take this on full-blooded. You know, that green is just sitting over the middle pocket. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, that's a good point, yeah. Play this basically up table. Try to get on the black initially if you can, but the green is a good fallback and leads nicely to the right half of the table. Oh, and just overcut it and maybe took it for granted a bit. When you're trying to get out of the out of that bottom end of the table, it's hard to hard to cue it straight sometimes. It's off with this <coughs> red coming into the left middle, just with the angle of it. It's gonna shoot it up table and it's gotta be precisely accurate with this. I don't even know if there there's probably not a gap between those two reds that we see there so i think yeah just gonna take this into the top left corner pocket that green is there what a nice little angle actually there's the black for him so smarter player than i am in the booth mr varun looking to take his first lead in this match cc jumped up quickly to a one nothing advantage and Varun jumped back with a very nice 74 break. And then CC stopped the bleeding. He regained his lead 2-1. And then we saw Varun take the fourth frame that sent us to the mid-session interval. Um, so opting to take the blue here, I guess, play shape for this red up in the green pocket. Maybe didn't like where the cue ball was for the black. Or maybe as well just when he came off the black where his red ball was going to be. Yeah, the next red, okay. Uh-oh. Bumps the pink. Nice flick. He's got a nice angle on the green just to stun down for a red here. But now he's going to switch up. Now he's going to take on the black. And that's just the beauty. Yeah, nice shot there. The only problem is that red that's below the white is covering that angle into the top right corner pocket for the black. So Varun's going to have to draw this back. Yeah, if he can get pretty straight in the black next, he can take out that red and open up the black into both pockets. It's going to be tough, though. I think his angle's actually going away from the black here. Might not be worth it. He did bump it a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to lose, lose a little bit of control of the cue ball with those blind angle shots. 
just have to play this just dead weight. Oh, played it with a nice little bit of stun. Clever shot. All these guys have all the shots in their back pocket. Yes, the AR referee Mike Dominguez is doing a, a great job of policing the table. His word is the final word. Comes down to things. Obviously, if the <coughs> player really had a discrepancy, they can be discussed after the match. Mm -hmm. But during a match, the referees say is final. Come up high enough. Mm, it's really close. Remove. Yeah. Did he get it? Oh, just doesn't want to risk it to chance. He's going to have to come back up for the blue. Good shot. Got on the right side. So another chance to clear up that red. Or he can gently touch this in. He's got the red by the pink. Can follow that through into the top right corner pocket, be on an angle for the black, probably stun, then clear up that uh, red there, but uh, he's not electing for that. Oh, he bumped that red. I don't think he wanted to, but he's okay. Actually, really nice, actually. Good angle here, just needs a little soft stun, and he'll be onto the black into the opposing top corner pocket. Yep, now black available into both corners. Big moment here. He's on a break of 33. We saw what he could do earlier, so he definitely can put on a big run. And if he gets all these reds out in the open, big chances on. Oh, wow. <laughs> Almost missed that one. Mm hmm. Rolls it in, though. Still on. He's going to have to figure out what to do with these two reds in the bottom part of the table on this top cushion. He might not need them just with the four reds open there. There's an extra bit of potentially 32 points, and that would push it into the snooker's required stage. So I don't think he's going to have too much of a concern with the reds on the cushion. Mm, yeah, for getting the frame, yep. I guess I'm just thinking high break at this point. Oh... Disaster. A little bit of an awkward bridge there, and I think that's what uh, caused him to lose a little focus and overcook that one. Yeah. I think Varun might have the good mindset here. He is opening a lot of the reds, and that's pushing to his strength, which is potting. Mm -hmm. I think we discussed that in the early openings of this match, that if it does get tactical, you've got to put the uh, advantage to CC. But definitely in a straight-up just potting affair, Varun has definitely shown that he's the boss at that. So CC, this is a tricky plant, that's for sure. A lot of distance between all balls here. Got to be very accurate. Wow, what a pot there. That was huge. Pressure pot. Yeah, he misses that. He's leaving Varun in for a frame-clinching opportunity. Massive shot. So what Snooker comes down to is those key shots and in the moments where you really need him. It's like a do-or-die situation almost every other pot. It's wild. Oh, he's got a couple of options. Yeah, one of that red that's close to the top left corner ran just a little far. Yeah, it should be okay on this red into the right corner pocket. Just float down, doesn't have to disturb those reds. Yeah, nice shot. Almost, almost tapped it, but uh, nicely on this black and just stun either in between the reds or 
just to the left part of the table. Probably just stun just to the left of those reds. Get straight in into the right corner pocket. Now you were mentioning those reds a little earlier for Varun, but Cece's definitely going to have to start thinking soon about those uh, reds. There might be a shot that he could take that he gets the pot and he gets a little bit of a breakout. Because he'll need them to take the frame for sure. Yeah. So here's stun. I mean, he has an option, I guess, to uh, stun over and get a little bit high on the black so he can push forward maybe and run into those reds. And then use his last red out in the open as his backup sort of insurance ball. Based on this angle on the black, it's pretty important. Oh, he tried maybe too hard to get there. Overcut it. Well, and for him, popped out of his seat like a jackrabbit. Mm -hmm. So happy to get another chance at this frame. Uh-oh, missing on the near cushion. It's going to fly around. This is an opportunity if it settles. CC still has a chance now. Sure does, yeah. He was going for the jugular there. You know, he makes that red yeah. into the side. He's got the black, and he does have a good angle to disrupt those reds. It looks like he might need one of them. But alas, CC has got a chance. Big miss, too, from Varun. He looked like he was on fire and... Pots like that, missing a couple of those might uh, might be what uh, CC needs to douse the flame. We'll see. Yeah, I think CC wanted to be a bit higher, but he'll probably run through this and then get the red into the top left corner. Mm, interesting observation from uh, Dave in the chat on Facebook saying every time in the match CC has had to stretch for a pot, he misses. So maybe something uh, to look back on. CC when he goes to watch back the clip. Not a bad observation if it's the case. It uh, maybe some shots to practice. I notice he got the rest out and extension on a couple of shots. This one into right corner and he's on the pink. Wow, what a pot there! Huge shot there. True to the angle off the pink to come down towards these reds. Looks like he does. Can he disturb them? Yeah, it's interesting. That was one of the... Probably the first piece of advice I ever got from anybody when I picked up a cue to play this game. Oh, look Don't at this. Don't stretch. Oh, look at this. Wow. I think he's on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Red is on now. Perfect little cannon onto that leftmost red. Beautiful little shot. He floats up table, wants to get a little bit higher. Wow, yeah. <clears throat> totally agree, Hammersmith should have been a bigger applause for that shot. Maybe the player's not necessarily understanding how how insane of a pot that was to get down and cannon that red. But now he's a little bit short on this black, so I imagine he's probably going to have to play safety games now after potting this. Or he can also opt to take the yellow into the middle, try to come down, but I think the black is too standard to not take it. Doesn't want it to go too far. It's true over in England and Europe on the Pro Tour. The audience members do have little radio transmitters so they can hear the commentary. And sometimes, uh, even over in England, some fans won't even know what is a good shot? There's some really hardcore fans that know what's going on in the game. Uh oh. But a bit tricky here, as this is a wonderful shot. This deserving of applause. Yeah, this is an applause shot I for think sure. Both of us would be saying, wonderful shot in there. And if the fans in the room here had those radio transistors in their ear, and if we're saying, you know, fantastic shot, it's just going to spur yeah. them on to make an applause. So it livens the crowd, yeah. 
It's what we're doing here in North America and the U.S. and Canada, just uh, you know, educating the new viewer, you know, what is good, what is bad, to the best of our ability, and hopefully uh, that will transpose into the audiences that come to these live events, so have more of an understanding. Dominguez might need some help there. So uh, it's probably all right for the pink or the white ball, but he just needs some help with the yellow. So that's the thing with the. Uh, it's nice with that uh, marker that we have just to mark where the cue ball is. But sometimes shots go uh, a little awry and they uh, knock into other balls to make it a little bit uh, tough for the memory banks. As Mike has also, you know, been kind of tournament directing as well over here. He's doing a lot, getting the, the room ready. And so... Yeah, the brown itself. A little more? Can't uh, blame him if it's not uh, pitcher perfect as he's been doing some fantastic things. All weekend long, making sure this is a successful tournament. Everyone is feeling at home. He's definitely made everyone feel welcome, especially the visitors that came from Canada. They had nothing but great things to say. And Brady Golan was just very happy with this room, really enjoyed his experience here at the tournament, and also enjoyed just being in this part of town. He really enjoyed... Uh, Capitol Hill area of Seattle, as well as Ross Bratz, and he just said it was a great trip. As he said, he, when he him and Brady were driving back to Canada a little earlier today, after unfortunately not Brown. becoming uh, into the finals. Uh, bolt cushion? Or past the red? Manic, yes, uh, the red? Christian did play in the tournament. Unfortunately, he was up against Gary Wallace from Canada in the round of 16 and was whitewashed by the old professor Gary Wallace so you might hear a little bit of Christian over my mic as he's got the video screen up in our booth and he's communicating back and forth with Mike and has to elevate his voice a little bit as there is that uh, plexiglass buffer that we have and the wall so they were able to get these colored balls that went a little awry And there you go, how the results were. Manic, just as uh, Varun gets ready to take his other shot. That's the, the knockout phase. Definitely likes to hit his escapes with authority. So Could have been a lot more painful there for Varun. But with a couple of penalty points submitted... CC is back in this frame. So, three in it and 35 on. And then CC might just clip off the right side of this red and get behind that pink. Wonderful shot. Wow, look at this. Incredible. Yeah, sorry, I was yelling in the background there, but, uh, just helping Mike replace the balls as accurately as possible. It's actually a little bit of a tougher job than you might expect. <laughs> yeah, it is a little nerve-wracking. You want to get it done precise, but you do want to get it as quickly as possible. And that's a, a good point there, Dave Daly, out there in the chat, that when you see the object ball, there was only that one red, and it was close to a yellow and brown, maybe the referee uh, will just take a little bit more time to mark those balls. But that's just going to come with experience. Uh, this is the first time in this tournament that the, the referees have been using the ball marker with the Taylor's pencil, Taylor's pencil just to mark the cue ball. So I think... Uh, Mike probably will look back at the tape there and go, yeah, I totally agree with you, Dave. I should have put uh, marked all the potential balls that would squirt away from their original position. 
but see, see, not putting him back in as he's got a good red here and colors are open, so good opportunity. Yeah, he's almost fine getting on any color here. Might opt to take the green just to get a good starter on this yellow. Just a question of not blocking himself since it will respawn. Respawn, excuse me. Yeah, I'm looking very well. I think there's going to be a path. Past that green, nice little camera angle there. Yep. Just needs to come off the bulk cushion after this yellow, and he'll be in business. That's a good shot there. Get make sure he gets below the brown, so he naturally is going to have the angle to come back from blue to pink. This is a tough shot at dead weight because it's crossing the nap. So I think it's one of those examples of either going around the tables a bit or uh, yeah, going around the rails is good. Other option too was to uh, do that sort of drag shot we talked about earlier, just to make sure that the majority of the shot doesn't get affected by the roll the nap and then the last minute let it turn over and roll to make contact yeah it came up a, a little bit short on that blue so almost a straight shot this is his frame ball here wow massive pot very strong from CC it's going to manage to steal this frame if he puts the final dagger with this pink and a big opportunity miss from Varu in the middle of that frame we saw when he had a couple of instances to put on a big break mm. oh, so this is interesting yeah 19 points in it so just one snooker is required as there's 13 on the table and a foul here would be six points. That would be the tie. Four seven. So, yeah, potential of a black ball respawn. So, so I thought they might be a little bit more loosey-goosey uh -oh. in this fifth frame. It is shaping up to be a lot of importance on it. This could sway the momentum swing. But uh, Varun has not let CC get ahead too much. Hasn't had a lead. Usually CC jumping ahead, and then Varun playing catch-up. And smart for CC there not to, not to even go for the pot, just kind of roll up and play a basic safety. Varun has the pressure here to come up with a big safe. Don't get, don't get too fancy with the cue ball. Easily try to cut that ball into the right corner pocket and uh, end up missing the ball together just because you're on the cushion. Not worth the risk. Now here you would just want to roll this pink up gently to the corner. Hope it just settles in the jaws or just barely drops in. Either corner should be fine. Just don't swing your cue ball around too far. Nap's going to take it a little bit towards the pocket, but it's not going to drop. And uh, this wow. has a decent chance, but it's going to hit the top of the black, uh, and now it's now it's probably into frame. Yeah, yeah, he's pushed that black, but patience. His next shot, he might be able to use the pink or the cue ball. 
and disturb that black off the cushion. Yeah, but how? Yeah, how it lies now actually is not a bad opportunity. Yeah, this is a scenario where if Prathamish was my opponent, I'd be quite feared. Because Prathamish is quite an accomplished billiards player, English billiards. Mm -hmm. Oh, look and at this! There's shots like that that are needed in uh, billiards when you're kenning into other balls and developing them and stuff. So. Yeah, but now it's CC with hand on the table. Opportunity to take this pink into the yellow pocket. Oh, is this going to get close? Almost fluked it. Drink could have the angle here. I think Stuff. Yeah, just... I don't think it's there, actually. Looking at it, just cutting it on the right side. You know, to come off that cushion and go towards the black. But with that cut, I bet you that pink ball is going to fall in. Uh-oh. Caught it too thin, maybe. Now another good chance for CC to close it. Hand on the table once again. Didn't glue him to the cushion. Oh, just caught it too thick. Still a chance for Varun, still alive. Big momentum builder. If Varun is able to steal this man, his confidence will go through the roof. If CC can just hold off, and take this one. Almost didn't seem like CC was going to win this one because Varun was coming out, mm -hmm. swinging, potting everything off the lampshades. Now this is a shot where I think again CC can just try to push this pink, roll it close to the pocket. There is a risk of in and off in the top right corner where where he's standing. And even possibly in the side, depending on how, how much spin he puts on this ball. Most likely just going to hit a dead weight. Shouldn't be at risk of going in off, but depends on the angle. Yeah, it's trying to play the safety. Push the pink two rails up the table, but now this is a decent chance, because now cue ball's kind of yeah. going towards the black, naturally. Yeah, I didn't like that shot by CC. Look at this. Just a little under. Yeah, had that gone past the black, I think the speed was perfect. But uh, it's got to get the speed and the line right. Now a potable pink as well, or maybe a double, cross double to the corner. Slow roll this pink, it's going to hit it thick. Yeah, I think the nap there took it a little bit into the pink. Just kind of down river. You almost want to shoot that shot like you're aiming to go rail first on the pink if you're slowing, slow rolling it at that pace. Yeah, another opportunity to, for Varun to get behind that black. This one again is a little bit more natural to come off. He's going to have to manipulate with a lot of right hand side. Maybe go two cushions, but yeah, he has the the one cushion up, but I think it's still... Coming down to the wrong side of the black. Another another dicey situation you can put him in is getting him glued to the top side of the black and making him bridge over it. But this pink is potable. I think he's going to go full guns blazing on this one. And pots that for the frame. Nicely done. Very slickly done. Didn't leave it anything to chance, so CC avoided disaster there in that fifth frame. He takes a 3-2 lead in this best of nine championship final at the Seattle Snooker Open. We're live at Ox Billiards in Seattle, Washington. If you're in the neighborhood, come on down. There's plenty of seats and plenty of time to see who will be the champ, and we'll be right back with frame six.
And we're running back into here into frame six. Varun Junje to break off. Uh, Sharma out there, I believe, in the greater Toronto area in Canada. Inquiring what the price money is. It's $3,000 to the winner, 1500 for second place, and I believe 700 for third and fourth, and 200 for fifth to eighth. Nitin is doing some great things for the game of snooker in the GTA. Glad that you're tuning in. And uh, anyone else out there, either on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch TV, search out Ox Billiards, and you can find this championship match there. And the videos are as well uploaded. So if you wanted to look at previous matches from this tournament, or even last year's tournament, you might be seeing a mirror image if you tuned into last year's, because these men were both the finalists in last year's competition. So still up for it, you know, CC really hasn't pulled away, as Varun has always, uh, you know, lost a frame, but able to get the next one back to tie it up, so we'll see how this plays out, because a big frame for CC, if he's able to take a 4-2 lead, you know, needing one, one frame to win the championship within three, and you gotta see he's favored. Uh, Vern mm -hmm. is a great competitor. Showing a, a lot more of it this year. I think, um, as we alluded to earlier, it was kind of a little rookie venture for for Rune coming out and playing snooker. He play, like, plays a lot of eight ball and nine ball, the smaller table game. And his first foray into snooker was last year. And uh, from my understanding, he is a snooker player originally. But I think since being here in America, um, majority of his game has shifted to playing a lot of pool tournaments, and he's yeah gained a following in in the pool scene for sure. And this is an interesting True. one. True, we're gonna <coughs> be needing a re-rack. Yeah, is it, this is a typical case where you would see it at the pro scene when they would re-rack, right? Also, in, in sometimes a lot more often than not, it's really actually the players that are calling it. Mostly it's up to the referee, but uh, they don't have some tip-taps back there. But yeah, with the re-rack, usually it's the referee that uh, will interfere and be like, all right, uh, if this frame isn't going where in a couple of shots, I'm going to call a re-rack. Sometimes you see a bit more recently on the pro side that uh, both players will turn to each other and be like, do you want to have a re-rack? And they're like, yep, yep, referee, we're going to have a re-rack. And the referee will agree and things will happen. Just like a touching ball. Not a touching ball, it looks like. So disturb that red. Let's move the cue ball down the pack. The player wanted to take on... Either of these reds, I think if you have an option, taking on the one in the middle of the table would be the preferable one. But yeah, CC, I guess, still just pushing the balls. Yeah, just playing that tactical side, and that's probably going to frustrate Faroon a little bit. Yeah, I think that's kind of the idea. Faroon wants to get in there and, and break them open and, you know... Yeah, force him to break out the reds, right? That's kind of the let him let him get frustrated to the point where he just wants to blast him into it, and then you can reap the reward. Hopefully, oh. it's a little discussion of Iraq, but uh, I think Referee Dominguez might have been saying something in there that uh, it might be getting close to a re-rack, but with a touching ball, you really can see he can shoot away here. Varun might just come back into the bunch there. Now, finally choosing to take this red open. Watch out, cue ball. It seems like it's safe. It's easy to cut off from these 
two reds in the left part of the table with the yellow, so might be opting to thin off. Oh, it looks like it's going to be kicking at the rack. Let's try to lay the cue ball. Roll. Two cushions rolling it into the stack. Oh, and just misses it. This has left the ball a little bit closer to this red into the yellow pocket. I guess... Uh, Dominguez didn't think that that was going to be mishappening there, so I didn't decide to mark it. So Mike Dominguez just looking at Christian in a broadcast booth, just trying to roll that cue ball back into its original position. Toward the pocket. A little bit back and it's good. That looks pretty good. So attempt number two. up a little bit here. He might not be looking to open up a lot of balls now. Uh oh, here's a here's one that's rolling dangerously close. Yeah, I think the one problem is is that red on the left side of the table is gonna block the path for that black to go into the top left. That was a Ooh. long and tough red. Didn't want to open him up, but I think he's a little fortunate. No, uh, I guess this red does pot into this left corner, so... I mean, Rune has an opening. He's going to be going kind of towards the reds. This is kind of a tough shot because using the rest out in the middle of the table. I guess he's looking at whether or not this passes. That is... I think that red, it just goes... But it is millimeters. You can see a great angle from where I'm sitting. Yeah. Yeah, it just caught the other red, right? Mm-hmm. It, it was there. It was definitely on, but it was very thin. And uh -oh. does this red go past the green? Don't think so. Not into the uh -oh. pocket, at least. Yep, so playing the safety roll up. It's really nice. Yeah, and there's we'll a full away. ball view of this uh, red at the top of the stack. Which means three foul rule is in play here. Kind of similar to the pool three foul rule, where if you th foul three times in a row and lose the frame. Although this is a, if you can see a ball full in the face. He's using just to roll up to this red. Speed is crucial. Not bad. I think there might be a look at this cut, though. Yeah, with the angle on this red that's just below the back. It's a shot to nothing as you can take two cushions to get back up to the bulk area. Thanks for the kind words. Uh, Sawson. Sawson, yeah. He's praising the Seattle Open and the BC Open. So what can we say? There's some good things going on in the Pacific West. Yes, indeed. We're just learning from each other. Yeah, working with each other. You know, each, both of us parties have, you know, some good ideas. We share the ideas. Uh, we discuss the ideas. And then we implement the ideas. And as well, we try the ideas because sometimes some ideas sound great on paper, but they just don't work in actual practice. 
but then some things work better than others. So, wow, what a shot there! Mm -hmm. Just off straight, but almost perfectly straight in black. Shows you the straightness of CC's queuing and how he's developed it. Now there is a red that goes way up table into the corner as well, but he's going to opt to take this this one. If he could yeah. screw back and play for the black into the middle. Well, into the... Ooh, oh, that was wow. the shot to play, that's for sure, because he did have the black to the top right corner. He's only left this red with the probably extended spider situation. Maybe one of these reds into the right middle that's kind of thin. With hand on the table, Rune might have to take the thinner, tougher red, or just play his outright safety here. It's hard to say. I think he wants to shoot at something. I think that's the call to make. Just clip off his red. He might be opening him up a little bit, Varun style. No, he's closing him up. Well, this is a little dangerous here. He's left a clear look for CC onto this red. A little bit of drawback behind that brown and... Uh, Prune's not going to be in a comfortable place. Oh, didn't quite get the right angle on the red. The screw back behind the brown ended up getting just to the side of it. Yes, it certainly would be nice to see some Ontario players come out for the Alberta Championship. I know there's going to be some BC players. Are there going to be any Seattle players? Christian, are you going to go up to Calgary to play in the Alberta uh, Championship? I don't know. It's, it depends. I think there's a lot going on this summer. We've got uh, some pool events happening here at Ox. You know, we uh, do have possibilities of a trip planned to New York for International Snooker League, is what I heard. We're going to have a little Ox team going up for that, so... Not sure. We're going to have to check out the calendar. Well, the Alberta Open Championship runs from April 28th to 30th in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. You can jump onto Snooker Canada's website to get registered for that great event. Ron Tatterton and Bill Cormilo and I think Albert Kenny and a few others are, are kind of building up a team out there to get things going, which is great to see. Well, it's great that... the you know, you guys put this together. I think it inspires your fellow Americans to achieve greatness in this game, just of the production value and how tournaments are run. And I think we kind of did the same as well. We're trying to inspire people in British Columbia. Mm, careful cue ball here. Careful cue ball. That's no, all right. In other parts of the country just to uh, get out there and, uh, you know, it takes, takes some great people to... Uh, get this game going that's for sure sometimes you got to swallow the pill and maybe hang up your cue and put your uh, passion behind the, the scenes we know we'll always have players but we're always looking for more scorekeepers and referees tournament directors commentators we all just kind of make the whole big package work wow what a what a plant there to come out of the stack. I would assume it was not intended. I don't think he came over to take a peek at it, so. Well, hello to you, James, down in Australia. Neil Robertson, one of the best overseas player to play the game of snooker. 2010 world champion. Had the distincting feat of being the first player ever to have a hundred centuries in one season, which is just amazing. And if you've got a pen and paper, James, right down the corner bank. That's a great club in the Toronto area. Former players John White and Jim White own it. And it's, uh, as Nick Barrow, I think, said, the great uh, snooker coach, he said it was probably the best club that he's been to just because they have got uh, lots of tables in good condition, both pool and snooker tables. They've got a good open uh, food and bar service, and 
a fair amount of television, so if you're just wanting to come in and maybe catch the hockey game, you can turn that on, or you can uh, grab a drink and pick up a queue and play a great game of snooker. So that is a, a good spot to check out. Oh, successful safety here from CC, and he's looking at whether he's going to take this on. It's going to have it replaced, it looks like. Mr. Dominguez, it does help if you remember where you put that little mark with the notch. It's the one thing that can happen. To the brown. Looking pretty spot on, I'd say. Yeah, it looks good. Sorry, I keep forgetting my audio is live and <laughs> start yelling <laughs> into the microphone. Not good for those fans at home. Apologies for your ears. Mm, good contact there. I feel like if I was CC, I would have taken it on earlier just because uh did leave a red accessible into the left corner pocket. But now in a bit more of a predicament, I'd say. Yeah, just with that blue in that very safe position, that might have uh, wavered his decision. Because he's got to know that Varun just missed that first attempt and he's just going to make minor adjustments mm -hmm. and then he should be able to make it. But unfortunately, you know, the black's pretty tied up and same with pink is that a chance it's gonna rattle that's a also kind of a natural safety there is to try to go for the pot and knowing how the pockets play quite often that ball will rattle and go along the opposite or the perpendicular rail that you're shooting into um, so smart shot there from CZ to kind of play a two-way pretty easily So now what do you do? You're hugged up to this cushion. Yeah, it's tough with that uh, red ball in the bulk area. A simple safety shot isn't there. Let's roll up on the red, all right. Pretty simple yet under underappreciated type shot, or I guess an underrated type of safety shot. He wants to cut off all the balls that he can with this black. He's awfully close. Don't know if CZ can do the same type of roll up here. In this case, unless this red is the full ball available. Closest to the black. Not so tough with that. It's red by the blue spot. That just mm -hmm. makes going up table just that much difficult and... Uh, this is a little risky, but not a bad, not a bad look. You know, if Rune decides to take this black on, or the red on by the black, it's, it's only leaving that one on if he misses it. Just wondering what about. The, uh, left this red into the middle pocket and see if he can just stun a little bit with it and it'll be on the black so that might have been a DeLorean moment there for Varun mm -hmm. get back in time he did go for it though at least it's a go down swinging type shot but tough cut there and 
fortunate to get this red to come and roll up on the other balls and keep the clusters where they are. Still nothing easier to available for Varun. He's going to have to make a either a risky shot or a pretty dynamite shot. Could also just roll into this stack as well as we've seen CC do multiple times so far. Oh, this looks good. Does he leave an edge? Varun does have an edge on that red by itself against the bolt cushion. The only problem is where is he going to leave his cue ball? Because there are some reds in the middle of the table. So just going to come off the cushion and into the bunch. Doesn't want to flick too much. Ooh, I think he's a little unlucky there. I think he's left this red on into the middle. CC is going to have to screw back for this one to be onto the black. The pink is really out of commission there, as you can see. Oh, it's awfully close. I think you're right. I think it does pot. Now playing for a bulk color. Yeah, he's got a few reds up there. Well, what do you like to get that blue off that cushion? That's for sure. It's just been sitting there pretty much all frame. angle to come back up table he <coughs> might even be able to come into those four reds below the pink and just open them up a bit but mm. bet probably not going to take that going to use the cushion to get up to that red by the blue spot great camera angle there to show you exactly what we're talking about so you see with the first opportunity here this would be a massive frame for him to take because a 4-2 lead on the hill would be quite the mountain to climb for Varun. And we've got Carl Hancock in the Facebook chat. How's it going? Saying congratulations to two finalists. Great players. Yes, indeed. Carl Hancock. Or Carl Hancock, the uh, owner of in the pocket snooker club that just opened down in Rochester. I'm sure we'll have some events planned with him in the future, trying to grow the sport of snooker as well. True. If I had a bit more time here in the Pacific Northwest, I would definitely uh, go down the road and visit Carl's club, but unfortunately I've got to zoom back north to the Pacific Southwest of Vancouver, Canada tomorrow. <laughs> Top cushion, southwest, all these things are so confusing. So a little battle of the tortoise and the hare, you know, slow and steady is winning this race for CC. Yeah. Not running out and trying to smack everything around, just taking well educated shots. I think from Let's the see. from the start of this frame, he's been kind of trying to slow it down, it seems like. Doing a lot of roll up shots into the stack. Maybe making Varun slow down his game a bit. Didn't want to cannon into that. Wanted to come off the cushion. To be 
gonna red into that yellow pocket. But has amassed a 31 to 4 lead. Uh oh. Is this the opening? Well, it's uh, the DDK, the dreaded double kiss. As I've always said, kisses of the double nature are always good in France, but not on a snooker table. This is a bit tricky for Rune. Queuing over these. But as you get more experience in the game, that's a, a practice routine sometimes, just putting your cue ball in front of a non-object ball and just queuing over top of that and doing that repeatedly so you're just familiar with it. That's one thing we have to say with practice. It just Ooh. You keep practicing the shot so you're familiar with it. So it's become second nature. And yeah, that greasy there, Tristan, Kristen, uh, Christian, I mean. Just got too tight to that red. And overcuts that one, and it might settle over the middle pocket. Mm hmm. Some drama going on with the rune, just off uh, table. Referee Dominguez and him having a little chat. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think last year there was a bit of an incident with Varun. Yeah, something about I think uh, having to do with when the when the break, mid session interval break is allowed, or when when uh, comfort breaks uh, are allowed. I think mostly in the room at any time. I think a comfort break is allowed. If you got to go, you got to go. But uh, I think when it comes to going outside for a smoke break or more extended, you know, five ten minute breaks, I think. Uh, wasn't maybe clearly established uh, last time, or it was, and somebody hadn't read it, or I don't exactly know what the dispute was, but there was some discussion around Rune wanting to take a break, but uh, wasn't time for it yet. And so, I think this year has been pretty clear and established. I don't think there's any issues around that. I believe we were clear that the fourth, after the fourth frame, there would be a mid session interval. Yeah, and obviously it's better etiquette, you know, those comfort breaks that happen in between frames, but, you know, hey, sometimes nature calls and you just got to mm -hmm. do what you got to do and uh, you just want to make sure and be very apologetic to your opponent and the referee. Hey, is it okay? I got to go and we'll see everyone will be all right with it. I've never seen actually a player forbid someone to take a comfort break mid-frame. I managed to push this red up into the middle of the table, even though it is mostly blocked into the green pocket. It's looking at the cluster here, maybe trying to play rub off the side and play behind the black. Just rub off one of the reds. CC is back a little bit to more of his tactical. Containing safety play. Mm -hmm. Definitely a shift since the start of this match. We noticed the first few frames they were kind of guns blazing both players side by side. But I think uh, maybe CC's re recognizing that he's either getting tired, that uh, not enough gas in the tank left to uh, put on that, you know, mid century type level. Yeah, it's one of our. Uh Friends on the stream seem to comment on the first half of the, this match that it was all gas, no breaks. So referee Dominguez actually just giving a warning to Varun. You have to show respect. You cannot be leaving your seat to go to get a refreshment. It's just not proper etiquette. He's 
entitled to, to get a beverage, but you want to do that between the frames. Again, they're having a, a discussion about it. I think uh, Referee Dominguez is just letting them know. You're here to play snooker. You're not here to stand by the refreshment stand. So pushing up all the red balls near the bulk end is not really going to help Rune's cause. Well, there is a fair amount of them, so with those low-valued color balls, just a bit too much. Just as the, the night grows longer, the weekend extends just sense of touch just kind of loses you a little bit. CC should have been tight behind that pink. Right now, Vern might just be able to get by it. Just hit that red on the left side of the three in the middle of the table. left. So you see with some options. Nothing incredibly easy on a shoe in But I definitely see that there should be some pots that see she should be able to make here. That red just above the blue spot. Cut that into the middle pocket. Come off the cushion and you should be on the black. Oh, nice shot. Yeah, unfortunately, cannoned into that pink, but a blind cut on either pink or black. The angle's going to shoot him up table because he's going to lose control, or is he just going to maybe play safe? Just Full-blooded. Excellent shot. Mm -hmm. Did have a risk of danger. There was potential. I think you see that, you know, 4-4 four, four in a decider. There's going to be a different thought there. CeCe's got a you know, little bit of house money he's playing with. Not too, too much, that's for sure. It's just 3-2. It's not like it's 4-1 or anything like that. And wants so us to hold up. Needs a bounce. Needs a bounce. Now it needs to bounce, yeah. It does have that pink. I think it does. It slides, yeah. He's pretty having a good look at it. Pretty but tight. It is pretty tight, yeah. I wonder if he's just going to roll up behind the black there. That's a great shot there. Yeah, really good shot. That's when you needed on the pink a few shots ago. So 30 points in it, 59 on the table. 
blue is quite safe. It's the sixth frame of this Seattle Open, Snooker Open Championship 2023. It's the final. It's a best of nine. David Burney and Christian Youngers is in the booth to guide you all through this. We're great that where you're tuning in from, whether it be Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch. We've had some great conversations all weekend long. There might be a few more to talk about. But definitely we appreciate all that viewership coming in over the stream because then we can take those numbers to you know, some companies that might have a little bit of uh, extra income coming down the way and say, what? This snooker thing is uh, a big thing. I think I should be involved in this. I think I should get my company aboard so it gets some yeah. exposure. Let us know if anybody wants to sponsor any of our events. We're welcome to have you. Nice rest shot there. Yeah, excellent shot. Long rest shot, too. Good shot there, then. Puts CC up by 39. And all these reds are above the bulk line. So that's not looking good for Varun. Because he does need to take these reds. There's got to be a high point of value color somewhere in there. Let's just see. The maximum he could take is possibly 20 with the four browns. And he's knocked this one down. He's tem tempted to take this one on. I think he's more wanting to get the behind the pink. Oh, look at this shot. Wow, great shot there. Nicely done. Yeah, you could just kind of chip away, take one of these high value colors. The pink has got the angle, obviously, to get up table. the angle a bit more. This is a thin cut into the yellow pocket. And I think he's going to take it, so... It's a nice cue ball there. Pretty tight to the top cushion. There's a pathway for CC to pot this into the green pocket. But it definitely is a long one. It's got to be pinpoint accurate. Queuing down on the ball a little bit. Careful, he doesn't want to put any unwanted side on it. Which is always a problem with these shots. Shot wasn't too bad by CC. He played the say shot with the intention of kind of trying to bait Varun into a, a difficult shot, which that red was. Or seen him to miss and hopefully leaving CC with an easy opener. This one's got some difficulty. Mid range shot going from one side of the table to the other. It's good queuing. Perfect. Yes, and lovely on the brown can follow through. 
I think, and probably we'll have a red potentially to the same pocket. Thirty-seven and forty-three remaining. So one more red would be his frame ball, but it looks like he's gonna play safe. This is nice. Hugging this to the cushion. How's the speed? A little fast, but he's at least hugging into this top cushion, so. Everyone's probably going to have to take the cross double into the corner. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, oh, he very missed fortunate. It. <laughs> missed it on the way in, but popped it on the way out. Yeah, missed it so bad he was good. The one big pain, obviously, has been all frame long. Has anyone seen the blue move at all? It's just been <laughs> sitting right by that middle pocket all frame long. Yeah, and it's Kinda an important ball for Varun, I think, if he wants to make a comeback. Cause he'd definitely, like and having it there, just the ponce or the brakes just can't run on because sometimes you can get out of position on the yeah. the black or the pink, but or sometimes they get tied up with other reds, right. and then you have that reprieve of the blue, but in this case, this blue has been tight to that cushion. And good morning to you, Snooker155, all the way from Germany, Deutschland. Glad you're tuning in. Glad you've been enjoying all weekend long. Yeah. He's back. I guess over there it's probably really either really late or really early, depending on how you look at things. Wow, what a pot. He's going to get down for black. He wants it to run a little bit more. Get off the cushion. It's a good... Good shot. Excellent oh. shot here. Wow. Putting in some dynamite full table positional shots. And again, he's in a natural angle to come back down table for a high value color. It's a key shot in the frame here. Now this blue is actually going to come into play. Does he go and bust it out right now? Oh, that's a massive shot. It's a big miss for Varun. Mm -hmm. I think he has left this. It does go. The, I think it definitely passes that yellow. This is, in fact, actually CeCe's ball if he does take it on. He might be playing behind the yellow. Yeah, choosing to play the double. Possibly a safety. Yeah. I think yes. That's the more smarter, smarter shot just because losing control of the cue ball on that blind cut on the red. You know, that double, he almost made it in, but the result of his shot, he's in safe. And he's got the snooker as well. One cushion escape here. Nice. 5.30 a.m. Just woke up. Yep, it's coming down to it. Oh, wow. Somehow managed to have an edge of that and cut it into the opposite corner pocket. That would have been some shot, that's for sure. <laughs> that would have been a highlight reel. <laughs> mm -hmm. Unfortunate part is he's left it quite nicely out there for CeCe. You can just pretty much pot this in and stun and be on a good angle on that black and come up table and yeah that blue is still a, a pain there that's for sure it's in uh, CeCe's back pocket he's not wanting to disturb it at all big shot 
I think he knew the, the weight that that ball had on it. Would have been his frame winner most likely. Taking that on. Uh, it's a safety. Pretty sure all the way. Excellent That's very shot. Very nice. So Mike just marking the cue ball once again. Yeah, Dave Daly, if you're still out there watching it, maybe use your uh, Jedi mind trick to work on referee Dominguez and just. Tell him, go, oh, Mark, maybe some of those bulk colors. <laughs> the cue ball might run into them if there's a miss. Well, fortunately... We'll bring up the monitor again. In this instance, all the bulk colors are on their spots, so that helps tremendously. I think it's really only the blue and black that are off of their spots. The only awkward thing would be to run into a bulk color and then run into the red with that color or cue ball. Otherwise, it should be a pretty straightforward respot, in my opinion. But CC is one nothing of a respot. He wants to hit this red and Can get out of the distance. snooker. Two cushion escape. He's going to come long. So very close, so just a little adjustment that CC has to make. Onish Khan is in the chat room. Let's see. Onish, why aren't you in this game? I could use that great catchphrase that the wrath of Khan is here. <laughs> Dave Daly with the Star Wars references. Sir Yoda would be proud. Master Yoda, I should say. Oh, he's going to be even longer. He's trying to go one cushion now at it. I think he had a better line earlier where he was going to go two cushions. Now Fair Varun enough. thinking about it. This red is on. Just wants to take a look at the scoreboard as it gets updated. 25 in it. There's 35 on there. Oh, my bad. There's 21 in it. Now, this kind of come down to this blue, I'm pretty sure, still. It is the, uh, that is the ball that Varun needs to solve in order to steal this frame. Thinking a lot about it. We do have unlimited respots, from what I understand. Since we have a referee present, so gonna we'll go ahead and replace the balls. All right, let's see what what is CC up against. Let's see if we can paint a better picture for him. I think the first shot that he was at was kind of the idea he wanted to go for. Two cushions. He needs to somehow lengthen the first rail a little bit more. Almost thinking. Go on the right side of the table. Just hit the cushion just above the blue. Two cushions at it from that side? And maybe just a just a trace yeah. of right hand siding. Oh, all the all the Europeans are back. Buck Buck Moose is back in the Twitch chat. Really? We're in Europe is Wisconsin. Or is oh, Buck is Buck he? Moose lying to me? Oh, oh no, sorry. <laughs> he was speaking German earlier. Maybe that's what I confused with. But Snooker 155 is from uh, Germany. Sure, there was a high level of uh, different vocabulary <laughs> on the stream. <laughs> He's in Wisconsin, yeah. My apologies. <laughs> yes, we had German and Dutch. It was rampant the in the chat. And uh, being Canadian, Canadian, maybe I should... Uh, Switch it up en français, s'il vous plaît. Um, 
Yeah, I think the the two cushion escape is what you're talking about that Pratamesh is referencing. Just missing the blue, kind of coming in behind the red two cushions. I think you still have to lengthen it off the first rail just a bit. Or I guess I guess a check side. True. Pratamesh and I are escape brothers from another mother. We're, we're missing you in the room, Prathamish. Glad that you're tuning in on the stream, but uh, yeah, always nice seeing you in the room. Good warning about energy. A good analyst of shots too. Uh, you really can get it, give you a good uh, feeling of what it is to be in the player's mind at certain times in a frame match, what they're thinking. Well, last I heard from him, he said he was definitely going to make it. In for the final. But it can be tricky sometimes. Oh, he's still recovering from yesterday's loss. I see, I see. Understandable. That's, uh, you know, if you're recovering from yesterday's loss, you should spend more time in the booth. We never lose in the booth, and we know all the correct shots to play. This is getting really costly for Cece, who is looking to run away with this frame. Got to be mindful of a free ball potentially here. a free ball. Yep, Michael likes the free ball. Looking to put him back again, though. Come on, CC, for your commentators, just just miss that blue ball on the <laughs> right cushion and see if maybe actually we do know what we're talking about in the booth. You got actually awfully close with this swerve shot, so... I think he's going to go for it again. Just misses it. Misses the blue. Another free ball, Mike. You might have been a bit quick there, or maybe... Uh, I think Bruno was automatically telling him, yeah, just replace. Yeah, should have kind of waited till that uh, ball came to a stop. But it's an amateur game. We're all learning together. We all make mistakes. We're humans. I actually would rather prefer a human referee than a robotic referee. Humans are easier to blackmail. <laughs> Is that so? Uh oh. Contact with the yellow or the pink now. This has just gone from bad to worse for CC. Alright, luckily pink on the spot. Well, it's starting to turn into a cash cow now for. Varun in terms of points. Yeah, this is really... Really doing a number on CC's brain right now. Now, when you go, is we going to the right side of the table? I don't think he has to go on this side of the long rail. He can go two cushions at the at the red above so. the blue, right? Yeah, just past the blue, just past the bulk it. side. Yeah, I think he's he's overthinking it. He's he's shooting it on the right side or like the the lower side of the blue. I think it's supposed to go on the top side of the blue. This one he had some uh, success within the very, very first mm -hmm. attempt, but I think he's just in his own head now. I think he needs to come take a drink of water, reset, attack this brand new. Mm -hmm. But it looks like it's there, right? Like the, the two cushion escape. It's going to be 
If anything I, missed on the thinner side, right? I feel like he's tried every other ex escape besides that one, so it's almost getting to the time where he should at least give it a shot. Yeah, because just looking uh, at it from this angle, it looks like that escape is on. Just play to the left side of the blue slightly. This one's still a decent option, I think. Yeah, this is a lot closer. He's getting close to the yellow. He's going to hit it this time. There nice we shot. Go. There's a round of applause from the audience. Oh. It's getting expensive. That's real tough. And watch Varun just put him right back in a snooker. Yep. Yep. Smart move. Can't say what CeCe's thinking, but we definitely all know what he is thinking in his mind. I think uh, if the one cushion is available on this left rail, this should be a lot easier of a snooker to escape from. Do you guys know the little trick, supposedly, for the two-cushion escape? Uh, the one that I know in pool that I do is draw the midpoint between the two balls, the one you want to hit and your cue ball, and then point to the corner pocket, and that's roughly the angle you want to be going into the first rail. Exactly. So I don't know why CC didn't try that. Yeah, because that would have been clear as day. That Oh, wow, it just barely missed that edge. So replacement again. This one should be easier adjustment, though. Yeah, because from that other camera angle we saw, if you draw that line, it's definitely pretty far to the left of the blue from what I could tell. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, just that hair of on the right of the center of the cue ball striking just gets that uh, cue ball to check up just just ever so fractionally when it comes off that side cushion. But uh, we're no here nor there. It's past news. CeCe's definitely forgotten about it. It's on to bigger and better things. Wow, nearly misses it this time a little bit. Funny a little bit that we, longer. Funny I thought, you know, the tactical side would be the advantage that CC has, but it's proving that Varun has all facets of his game working and punishing CC heavily in this sixth frame. And it's too yeah, bad definitely. We don't have a, a stat here, or maybe someone who's making notes in the stream just can let us know how many penalty points CC has succumbed in this frame. It's definitely. I mean, he was leading by it. He was one, I think, one pot away from. Forcing Varun to require snookers. Oh, and that actually made contact? No? Not quite. Replace again. Just has to make a small, minute adjustment. CC, remember where you hit it? Just be a little to the left of it. <laughs> Easier said than done. Looks like pure frustration right there. Yeah, CC was like a ball away from winning this frame. And now is in trouble, trailing by 22 points. 35 on. Massive. Yeah, if the one cushion on the left side rail is there the whole time, I think I would have gone for that. But maybe he's he's recognizing now that he wants to just roll up on it as opposed to leaving a shot for Varun. It's going too long again. He's got to commit to either going longer or shorter. True. Referee Dominguez has now got to keep an eye on that scoreboard. Yeah. So we might be in a situation where snookers are going to be required for CC and the putback rule will be not in place. Yeah, part of the match going, going longer on the current one cushion also is, a, is an option. Just keep aiming for longer. He's trying to get too close to the ball just there to tap it. Yeah. But I feel like the one cushion is a better escape just because you're pushing the ball towards the rail as opposed to here. You're pushing it out more into the open. And this pot is on for, for Varun. 
spot, this frame, this match is going to yeah, look, this is frame going to come down. Oh, oh wow. And leaves another snooker. We would call yep. this one a fluker. If we lived in Tasmania, possibly. Tasmania. Come up with all the crazy terms. No, no, no. This is this is in Seattle. We're here at the Seattle Snooker Open. We're flukering all over the place. What do you think, audience? Give me some backup. What yeah. do you think? Give us give us a verdict, audience. Fluker all the way? Or is Dave Burney just being a party fluker? How can I get with this? Snooker fluker. It says buck buck moose. I got one on my side at least. Mm, that's all it know. takes. I think that's all it takes. You that just almost need to sounds like, you know, Buck Buck Moose is saying he fluked the snooker there. Yeah, so he flukered it. There you go. James in the YouTube chat. He's taking it. They've never heard. They never heard of the term fluker. Well, it's been coined here. You heard it here first, folks. Yeah, thanks. Now, next, the world stage. Christian is using the power of persuasion. Oh, nice pot. I think that's going to be the frame ball. So, pretty massive, massive frame here. Yeah, what a turn of events. We thought CC was easily going to put a four-two lead onto the board and be on. The verge of retaining his championship. But uh, great snooker that Varun laid and just a lot of trouble that uh, CC encountered. There we go. Spread it in Melbourne. And then it'll come back to us. Okay, miss. But I think uh, snooker is required now. Yeah, one snooker required, I believe. Yeah, Pratamish. Steal and steal back. We've got a match here. We've got action, folks. Looks like there's not action on the pool, on the base, on the, on the pool, on, on the snooker table, huh? Oh, this might leak out. Yeah, it's going to leave a pot mm -hmm. into the middle. In the corner, I'm pretty sure. Corner, potentially the side. Side's a shorter shot. Yeah, just roll this into the pocket. It's going to take the nap with it a little bit. Oh, uh, not quite enough. So CeCe's probably going to pot this ball. Play up table. So now this blue is crucial for CeCe. I think that's kind of where the match was always going to end up. This, or this frame was always going to end up talking about the blue. Blue makes him a favorite. I probably would agree with that. <laughs> Although I would spell favorite <laughs> more correctly than, than OU, but that's fine. No, I think Prothamish's spelling is spot on. What's wrong with adding a little extra vowels to it? Yeah, you're just making it more, Americans more phonetically are, Americans jarring. are pretty cheap. Can't afford to buy another vowel, vowel from uh, Pat? called being efficient okay it's uk spelling it's also canadian spelling everywhere else and probably the world you know that uses colored money not different shades of green <laughs> 50 shades of green that's america's money oh another fluker not quite Very nice double there. Oh, but I think that's going to be the frame. 
add this brown to definitely make it a certainty. Wow, I never spoke Australian before. That's interesting. So Varun has tied this match 3-3. Three, three. Now it's coming down to a, a best oh. of three, and that blue finally moves. There it is, <laughs> and it's going to be the frame, though. So Varun takes that one ninety four to 58. It's tied 3-3. Three, three. CC's going to have to have a, a good talking, probably just going to relieve himself and maybe take a quick mm -hmm. comfort break and maybe have a little scream to himself because he was just really in a tough position there. So... We'll be right back with a crucial frame seven. Whoever takes that one will be one frame away. So don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. back here with frame seven just about to kick off see so you having a lot of deep breaths in his chairs over there he's looking over in my direction you know he's just terribly frustrated by committing so many penalty points in that last frame really that was the the difference of it all there so there was a bold prediction early on in this match that someone had thought that it might go all the way to a decider and a black ball respot. So that's still not out of the question. But referee Dominguez is just updating the scoreboard. And CCU will be coming to the table to break off for frame seven. Very important. Who takes this one will be one frame away from the championship. what we're waiting on here maybe just a gentleman at the uh, concession stand was just taking his time and just waiting for this spectator to return to his seat so there's no uh, up and down in this frame from the audience Looks like coverage. 
Good break off shot there by CC. So can Varun take his first lead in this match? It'd be quite the important time to do it. But as pattern has shown us, it seems like CC wins one, then Varun wins one, CC, Varun, CC, Varun. Am I reading this right? Dave Daly asking, how many drinks have you paid had? Well, I'm not sure, Dave. You let me know. Short-term memory, that's true. Oh, this looks reminiscent. Previous frame. This red does go into the middle. It's going to yeah. double it. Oh. It looks close. It's on. Wow, wow, great shot. Let's see what he can do here. Varun, a more aggressive player. Will he take this black and cannon the cue ball into the pack of reds and open them up? Let's see what he's got. And oh. He's on. He's on a red. Yeah, smart shot there. Just... You know, obviously, yeah, earlier in this match, he probably would have gone in there and broken up the reds as he was potting quite well. But now that he knows it's getting closer to the end, you just got to clench up a little bit. Don't want to take any too risky shots. Just clean up these loose reds, and hopefully you can come back and be in a position where you can disturb the reds and open them up a little bit. So a little stun on this blue into the left middle. Should have the... Red just below the yellow into the same pocket. He's got a good angle to be back on the blue. We have an angle that will use the cushion just to come off to So yeah, I think that blue's going to be out of the question. He might come through and be on for the green and get that angle to come back down table. He did have a good angle. Oh, Dave was saying pair. Oh, interesting. Okay. So the Stephen Hendry special right here. Take the blue and come into the pack. The blue. Mm. Valiant attempt, but you gotta make sure the pot first. So it's given CC a bit of an opener with this red into the middle. But potentially, maybe, oh, take a look and see if that black passes the blue. I don't think it does. I think the blue's just spoiled that party. Yeah. CC might have been able to take this open red on the left side all the way down to the yellow pocket and draw back. You can still draw back and just play for blue outright. Well, just yeah. like that. Just like that. Fantastic. No big deal. Does it get nice there? Shot. Perfect. Great camera angle showing just a nice smooth flowing stun shot up for this red. around to take a look at the angle of he might just stun and stick that red there it looks like it's straight on so he can have the pink into the top right corner oh, oh no ouch ouch and this red looks to be on by the pink spot draw up for the blue ball. It's 
to get on the right side. Ooh, just rather straight on. Yeah, if you had an angle, we could come down and possibly disturb a lot of those reds. But, uh, Does he force the issue with like taking on the pink? That's oh, just dangerous. Well, this plant isn't really on either. No plant is really in the pack at all. Yeah, as you can see there, interesting that the CC's high run of the match so far is only 24. Mm -hmm. We had that magical 74 in frame two. So surprising that CC hasn't put together a, a larger break. As he did have a, a 78 as the high run so far of the tournament. Yeah, Buck Buck Moose. It's going to probably do have to do the cross double now like you said Hasn't left anything, but it's left an advantage for Cece to just clip off this red by the cushion, get behind one of those bulk colors. Maybe he's just going to go thin off this red in the bunch, get behind the yellow. Mm, don't let the nap take it. Don't let the nap take it. It's close. It's short of pace. Good cue ball though. Let's tighten that yellow pocket. This is awkward bridging. Is he gonna get up against the yellow? No, nope, it's gonna leave hand on the table for a CC. CC could have a shot to nothing with this red out in the open to the left of the black. didn't quite hit it as well as he wanted to, but he still got a decent cue ball, wanted to come across kind of like a break-off shot with a lot of right-hand spin. Yeah, left a, a mid-range for Varun. This is not uh, out of the question. Varun stun it there for out the black. Oh, no, just going to come off the cushion, playing it with an element of safety there. Now he's got to run around the world, go in and out of bulk off this blue. Just didn't want to cannon into that green. Just caught it. But he might be able to just have a, a thin thin cut on that, those three reds that are aligned together. If he can just flick off the right side thinly on that bottom one, we'll take him off the top cushion and the side cushion and probably shoot him back into bulk. I don't think there's a ball that will block that path if he does get the thin snick on that red. If it's thick, then he's going to be in trouble. So almost maybe take a this red on the cushion, yeah, hit the right side, cross it across the table, come back up table. Got to watch out for that red. Ooh. Oh, it's pushed out in the open. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's giving Cece an opportunity now. He's got the blue after this. Black goes to one corner pocket. So we'll see how that plays out a little later. Cleverly using that green ball as a stopper. Got 
good eye, Buck Buck Moose. He spotted that as well. Not a lot of reds to play for unless you're stunning in right into the pink. Hit it full. It's okay, I think. I don't know. I think he wanted to be straight. I don't know if this red. Yeah, I think this red goes. He wanted to be, I think, on the red and the, the middle one. That's what he's looking at. Oh, maybe the one on the top. Screw back for the pink in the middle. Yeah, nice shot. Yeah, and just hold his pink there as he's got choices of those two reds there. Yeah, really nice speed control there. Stun, stun draw. Now this is reminiscent of the shot that he missed earlier in this frame. Hit it pretty clean that time. The problem is he didn't get quite far enough off the rail, so he's going to have to be bridging with a high ball. Probably going to roll forward, play the pink in the right middle next. Since black is yet to be available. Drawing back. It's the problem with that shot. You start to lose a lot of accuracy when you try to force that. Mm -hmm. I like now going the, forward. Yeah, now the black has opened up. <laughs> That's great, Vanita, here. Your youngster just glued to the TV watching that. Look out. Future champion. <laughs> Watch out, yeah. In Canada, I'm predicting Ryan DeSani. If he keeps with it, his dad is very passionate about the game, and I think that just carries on to the children. So hopefully uh, we can have some rumblings of some good young talent in Canada. Bring them on down to Ox next time. We're all ages here. Can get them trained up on these tight pockets. Interesting. So not going for the red up to the middle. Taking it one in the corner. I think them felt a little bit. Almost like a bit of a reckless shot, I feel like. The safer shot, in my opinion, was to shoot this into the middle because you're, you're kind of going away from all the reds, but you still want to get high on the blue. A little bit safer if you miss. Here, you still leave CC amongst the reds. But not much he can do, actually. Yeah, but as much as he's close to that red, that's tough going into that middle pocket. Oh, this is looking good. I think he has the Fair. full ball snooker. Yes. <laughs> and the crowd applauds. <laughs> I think the crowd is uh, almost as tired as these players must be. No, they should be fine. There's no excuse. True. They are athletes. They're probably doing some of the training. Definitely uh, there's a lot more focused on physical education with the players now. Like back in the boom of the 80s, you had characters of all over the map. You know, I think the only push-up that Bill Werbenick knew was uh, taking a beer glass from uh, the table to his mouth. These players will know what it's like to go into these long matches. Mm -hmm. They've probably had friendlies with friends that have gone a lot longer, but these are filled with a lot more pressure. Being a final in the Seattle Snooker Open Championship. Well, managed to make pretty good contact there. No need for the respotting functionality. Get to probably gonna try to keep him on this bottom rail. Yeah, it's not too bad. Forces Varun to play a tough safety while at the same time pushing reds out in the open up table. 
near the bulk cushion. Or closer to the bulk colors at least. And yeah, those four reds, the one on the left, you can just flick it lightly. And we missed it. Oh no. Is there is a free, free ball? ball? Is it a free ball? I'm not sure. I or think it Dominguez is. Dominguez is definitely looking. He hasn't checked it yet, but yeah, I think he's looking at this red now. Yeah, free ball on. Wow, I think this green just goes straight into this middle pocket. Dead. Yeah, just needs to stun it in there. Then it'll be on the blue. So yeah, electing the green ball. Oh, just got it thick. There was the opportunity. Yeah, the one exception to that free ball rule is you can't roll up to that free ball. You can't use it to put your opponent in a snooker. So something to remember for all you youngsters or new players to the game or some of our pool players that are transitioning into snooker. It's not a bad practice just to go online because... Yeah, the rules are readily available for download, or you can order a, a pocket size it was a foul. He didn't rule book. A ball. He didn't put a red. It was just a foul for the free ball. Yep, it's a. So just uh, Arthur Dominguez and Marker Younger just had to have a little discussion, as you might have heard through my mic, just to make sure the score is correct. Nicely shot there. Old and confident. So some reds out in the open. Good opportunity for CC to get ahead in this frame. Very important one, frame seven. Winner of this puts four frames onto the good and just needing one more to hoist that beautiful Seattle Snooker Open trophy. It's going for black. Interesting. I feel like I feel like I liked shooting pink there, even though it was a longer shot. Just a much bigger pocket, less of a blind cut. He has been making those shots pretty consistently today, though. Now he leaves a pretty open table, and he's got a good starter for Varun. Chance to put on another big break. So I'm just, uh, as we talked about comfort breaks, sometimes uh, they can happen when you're right in the middle of a frame. Some of the players just, you know, when you got to go, you got to go. It's not uh, the best of etiquette, but there's a lot of pressure out there. A lot of water has been drunk by both players just to calm the nerves. Well, no real clear winner looking like in this frame just yet, but uh, it seems like a, an easy opener for Varun. And that black is just sitting over the left corner pocket. You can see some of our highlights that are coming up. You get some information about being a member here at Ox. Also, the World Women's Snooker U.S. Open will be coming back to Ox Billiards this autumn, 2023. Lots of good fun. I enjoyed myself thoroughly when I came down, so hopefully I'll be invited back again for that great championship. I think hopefully we can grow. Hopefully we can get a few more Canadians down. I know there's some women up in Canada that do have a, a strong history in the game of snooker. They might have just not known about it in time. But hopefully I can get some information from Mike and pass it on to uh, the ladies up there in the Great White North. Eight. I was going to take this little 
thin cut to the side. Yes, and doesn't go. Oh, it was tough going over those reds, that's for sure. Wow. Big shot. Now CC. Beautiful. Now he has a chance. Yeah, perfect on this pink. Now he has the opportunity to take advantage. Actually, no, I think it's going away from the reds. Not ideal. Yeah. Might have to go forward. One cushion coming behind those reds. Would have been nice if he could just stun over. Like a stun run through, but... Yeah, on second look, he was just on that wrong angle, so he's trying to use a couple Ooh, of cushions to do to that theory. Stop there, almost. Would have been awesome to get a little flick off of that red. Mm-hmm. But... Now, what do you do? Do you take this... Take this red into the right middle and roll it in? Seems like such a risky shot. That's a thin cut, yeah. Don't know if it's a touching ball? I don't think so. Now, as we can see, there's definitely a gap there. So, if you're playing a safe up table, I might just try to hide, hide from this red that's on the right long rail. Looks like he's going to just thin off the edge of this and play behind the pink. That's probably behind the yellow. Keep confusing yellow and pink for some reason. Are you color colorblind? No, I'm not. I'm just like, when I when I see yellow, I want to say pink. And when I see pink, I want to say yellow. It is not bad, actually. You know, you can, as long as you announce it at the beginning of the match, if you tell the referee that you are colorblind, because a lot of colorblind people have a tough time distinguishing in this game the brown and red so that's the only time when a player can actually ask is this a brown ball or is this a red ball mm. but they do have to state before the match that they are legally colorblind well there it is that decides it for all those who are trying to figure out which which sport is objectively better when it comes to colorblindness i think uh pool just wins there's there's no decision to be made objectively you don't have to deal with color blindness as a pool player, right? And then there's some people that are just completely blind or oblivious. <laughs> as I was playing, practicing at my club the other day, and some gentleman came up to me and goes, are you on stripes or solids? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Can you believe it? I almost just fell over in my... <laughs> wow. Nah, brought the match. I think uh, yellow and pink. I would call it more of dyslexia than I would call it <laughs> um, actual uh, color blindness. But what a pot there from Maroon! Wow. It's those shots, those shots that are close to the to the cushion that are always most impressive. Oh, now he's getting a little bit. I think the fatigue is settling in for both players. You can see this frame is starting to turn into a grind. Very lucky that brown came back down. Blocked up any potting angles for these two reds out in the open of the table. Yeah, and now I think this, these frames are going to start to turn into kind of who plays the better the better snookers, most likely. Because as we saw last frame, a couple of really all-time snookers could mean winning the match outright. Now this was rolled a little bit too far. Definitely left this rightmost red visible. You know, when you get into those long matches and it gets near the end, you just got to trust your technique. Mm -hmm. You've been practicing it so much, just know that it's going to be there. I'm pretty sure when this match comes to a conclusion, both players' minds will be probably a little mushy. Oh, definitely after the grind they've had to go through. Three days of snooker, at least half the day long. Well, actually, both these players only had to have two days of tournament action as they both qualified. CCU oh, true. defending champion of last year 
and first place in the Washington State Snooker League qualified first overall and Varun qualified in seventh. He was second in the no, he was third actually because Kevin Cooey and Charlie Brown yep. were in the final of the qualifier here, but Kevin Cooey finished in third place, I believe, in the league. So yes, that pushed Kevin into f- third spot. Yeah, so he didn't take the qualifier spot. Instead, Varun earned it, I uh, mm-hmm. believe, as the seeded player from the qualifier. Yeah, we had two two players from Canada's uh, one, top one four seven qualifier. Correct. That was a Ross Bradson and uh, who was the other? I don't remember. Karam Gill. Karam Gill. That's right. Okay. And Ashik Taki was the third player that qualified out of top one four seven in Richmond, and then uh, that got him to the groups. Yeah, we didn't have the didn't have the numbers that we uh, usually have, but uh, the entry fee was a little bit more, I think, than the Canadian players are used to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and maybe time. I think maybe some of the players had a little bit of uh, hangover from the BC Open. <laughs> and now that you know we're back and able to schedule events, and, you know, things can happen, but most of the time we like to have our events scheduled when we do make it just before the season starts. It's only, you know, strange things like worldwide pandemics that might push the, the dates of our tournaments but at least people can now start to get prepared no, no big deal I was, yeah i'm trying to get people knowing that th- when you think of february british columbia open snooker championship yep let's try and do that here in yeah you think march, march? seattle snooker seattle open. snooker open yep hopefully in uh, april we can have the alberta championship but maybe pull that maybe a little bit more to the earlier side of the month uh, because I know in past years we have had the Richler Cup. That was Snooker Canada's crown jewel event. But it hasn't come back lately. So we'll just see if that's going to come back next season. Because I haven't really heard anything of this year. I know players have been asking about it. I know British Columbia was slated to host it back in 2020. But then obviously we know what happened pretty much three years ago to the day. We all got uh, locked up. Uh oh. And actually, I think it was quite a benefit for this game because I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Snooker Scene podcast that Dave Hendon presents over in the UK, mm. but I'm quite an avid listener and communicator with Mr. Hendon on various snooker topics and music topics. But a lot of people that chime in rediscovered snooker or s- discover snooker over the pandemic ah interesting because it was actually one of the only sports that was on and still had live content i see as they were able to yeah kind of bubble yeah they were at the in milton keys Ooh, CC. yeah milton keys was the venue so they had a a venue and a hotel all in the kind of the same complex so they could be in that bubble as you say Mm -hmm. so they you know they didn't have any crowds and you're not going to different venues but still uh, a season of snooker was able to have so and kudos to the team over there at world snooker tour is like that must have been a a huge amount of logistics to get through they did a fantastic job to keep the snooker there and you know pulling people back into the game so a great job to do. Yeah, I think a lot of a lot of sports and different games have thrived. I think from the pandemic, it's definitely seen a resurgence in chess. I believe online, a lot of stuff during the pandemic, stuff to do at home. Um, maybe some other solo sports or having a lot more time, like solo time, solo practice time uh, for people. Um, maybe more running, endurance sports. You know, things to kind of, like, go back to, I guess. It's been an interesting shift. Yeah, things do go in cycles. So, uh, I think someone earlier this weekend was feeling that there is going to be a potential boom of snooker in North America. And I wholeheartedly agree 
and I am hoping that we can just get some more youngsters in Canada. There is still the old guard of a lot of older players mm -hmm. that are still around. It's nice to see here you guys in America have a more younger mm, field, shall we say, of players that are actively very interested to learn the game mm -hmm. and study it and pursue it. And, you know, you have a fellow American, Ahmad Ali, on the professional tour. So that's got to inspire a lot of Americans to pick up the cue and be like, hey, my fellow country person has done that. Maybe I can do that. So I think that's why a lot of people in Canada picked up a cue. Cliff Thorburn, Kirk Stevens, Bill Wernick. They were the team that won the first World Cup in snooker. Here we go again, unfortunately, for CC, it's the far jaw, pushes his red out. Yeah, it definitely goes that one trouble is if he does miss it, unfortunately that other red. Ooh, could get by that red. Yeah, I think it was on. This black, though, is really hugging this, this cushion here. Going back to take a look, just debating. Is he going to have to get out his chainsaw and cut down a couple of redwoods and bring them to the table? Because he need the long stuff if he's electing for the black. But it is a thin, thin cut. The other color ball really he has is that blue into the green pocket. There we go, he's reaching for them, like you said. The redwoods, the long cues. Pratamesh saying snooker off the black. Yeah, push this cue ball. Just all the way up to the bolt cushion somewhere. I don't know where else you would snooker. Or I guess you can roll cushion first, tap the black, push the black towards the red one cushion. It's probably the shot maybe you're describing. Just ended up cutting it straight in, but watch out blue ball. Watch out blue ball. <laughs> Everyone in the room leans to the right <laughs> just to see if that uh, cue ball passes the blue. It's awfully close. I don't think it does. Yeah, he's kicking at it. Good contact. Is it going to get safe? I think it's gonna Ooh. be blocked by the yellow that's close you can see from this angle I think uh, oh the red actually might go I think it does just barely just barely oh, he's not playing the safety yeah not risking oh. it to chance this is not bad, but this red is going to keep rolling. I think it's left an edge for Varun. Maybe. Referee Domingo's coming to take a look. Yeah, the pink is pretty important for sure, I agree. Helps Varun only because he's in the lead. If it uh, shifts, I guess, in general, like we saw in the last frame, previously the blue was on that rail and... Varun was able to get enough snookers that the blue would eventually help him once he gained the lead. It's kind of like all the balls that are stuck tend to be uh, more useful for the player with the lead. Yeah, decent effort, but uh, 
pistol recovery. CC did not get a reprieve there. Where she bounced off the ball cushion quite heavily. Left an open red here for Varun. Long pot, late into the evening. These are not easy. Yeah. This shot, oh, a little bit thick. Uh-oh. They're going to kind of roll together. I think it's going to be, yep. Pot is on. This frame is really showing you how much of an endurance match uh, Snooker really turns into. Even though it might not be um, completely aerobic of an exercise, it might not be sweating and heart racing and pumping necessarily while at the table. It still takes a lot of athletic uh, strength to uh, make it. Yeah, I'd have to say it's more of a uh, Boston Marathon for the mind rather than the body, this game. Very big mentally. But it just shows you, you know, some of these matches do go quite the distance, so being physically fit is not a bad idea. Yeah, I guess what I was trying to say was, yeah, being, uh, being, you don't need to be, you don't exert a lot of exercise maybe while playing, but uh, to play this game at the top level, you have to be physically fit yourself, because it is a grind, it's a battle of endurance, back and forth, back and forth. There actually is actually a little bit of a... Uh physical activity because actually Diana Schuler, our good friend from Germany who does wonderful things for the women's tour was telling me when she was down here that actually when she started playing snooker a few uh, months afterwards she had lost about five stone in weight. Hey, there you go. See? It's maybe, it's maybe just an exercise that people aren't uh, necessarily used to. Not It's not a very active sport where you're running around per se but it still doesn't mean you're not working hard and Burning calories, and oh, he almost got a really friendly nudge on this black. Yeah, I think a lot of people obviously talk about steps. How many steps have you had? I've taken this many steps today. You know, i got to get my steps in. Yep. Well, there's a lot of steps around a snooker match, that's <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yeah, how many am I at now? A few thousand? Yeah, makes sense. Oh, watch out middle. I think he's okay. So now pretty, pretty big pot there from Varun. This could be an opening for at least a clearance enough to get to his frame ball. Looks like a 13 ahead. He's going to need probably at least brown from what I can tell. Yeah, Brown would put him 23 ahead. Oh, I guess he has a color right now. Sorry. I was thinking just just a color. So, pot's a high-value color now and then just needs green. Yeah, like I said, Pratamish. Can also elect to just roll up on the green. Having the lead, making CC forced to kick at this ball. Yeah, lots of decisions, but when you're down on the shot, that's the only decision that you're going to make and only one you can think about. So, good roll up there. Smart shot to play. I know he wanted to definitely kind of get this frame done and dusted with that visit, but uh, didn't do anything careless. He knows at a turn of a hat, this frame could turn around. Great shot there of that uh, 
philosophy that we're talking about with the Paradon cue ball marker and the white tailor's pencil. with the left side. Low on the spot. Just barely nudges it, so it's a five-point oh, foul. And goes, goes in. in. Uh-oh. Yeah, I don't think he's putting him back. This is disaster, I think, for CC. Yeah, blue was on the spot. Interesting, though. He's choosing to put him back. I feel like on the spot, I mean, blue and green. Does he not have enough access from the D to just screw back off the yellow? Or does the yellow have to go? No, he has uh, plenty of room to go yellow yeah. and screw back off for the green in the middle. I would surely think he would have taken it. Yellow still is a, a, a tough shot. Yellow and green when you're in the D off its spot, even if you have ball in hand, they still are a little tricky. Because sometimes some weird psychological feel feels like you've got ball in hand. You can put it anywhere in the D. I should have a for sure shot in. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I think I was treating this chalk mark here to the left of the yellow as the spot for the yellow. So yeah, he would have to cut this in. Now, the replace game begins. Yeah, I, f I, fig I figured that if the yellow was closer to the corner pocket, he could just pot it and screw back. It's just getting disastrous again for CC who we thought was the more tactical player. Let's catch it up on oh, the Actually, Charles. he shouldn't be going back actually there. There's 31 in it. We are at the snooker's required stage. Sure enough, he hits it that time, but Just might put him in a snooker as well. Yeah, 63 32, that's a difference of 31 points, and there's 27 on the table. Oh, if there's a full ball here, didn't roll quite far enough with the cue ball. If you can get enough angle here for the sending the yellow around the rails it's actually kind of tough it's a little bit too straight I think just wonder if it's straight if you can just draw this back towards the pink Yep. Yeah, draw this back and get the yellow up table. It's awfully close, but needed a kind of a fortunate bounce off of the cushion. Didn't quite get it. And just drew it back just a bit too strong. It canned into that pink and pushed it, so it would have been really delighted if it just snuggled up nicely to the pink. Because Varun can see the yellow. Three cushions... This is the middle. It's going to leave a long safe shot. This is going to be good. Here you go. 
get a snooker there. Discussion here. And we've got 31 points in it. No replace allowed, right? It's, it's, I feel like I've thought I've heard, but people are saying, like, where we are before the shot takes place, he cannot be put back. But I feel like I remember reading something like, as a result of the shot. So if he misses this, say for instance, CC will get four points, and then we'll have a difference of 27 on the table as a result of a miss. And then that would lead that CC could still win the frame by clearing the balls. And ooh, that really oh, was wow. costly. Yeah, really costly. But speaking of it, that's a snooker he needed. But yeah, as a, as a result, he can still clear, but he just simply cannot replace effectively, right? Well, just going back to that, like, I'll have to do a bit more, because some people have said that, and that the olden rules were, you know, just before the shot happens, you know, there were snookers required on the sh before the shot happens, so CC couldn't be put back, or Varun couldn't be put back in. But I feel like I've read, just as they've updated the rules, that as a result of the shot, you know, there would be 27 points... Yeah, then in it, so that allows CC to pot all the balls and still tie and force a black ball respot. Yeah, I think it used to be what you're describing, but didn't it change to say at the start of the shot, if snookers are required, no respot available? So the determination is now made at the start of the shot as opposed to the result of the shot, right? True. I think that's what the shift is now. Yeah, we've got we've got to commentate right now. We can't uh, <laughs> deliver reading rule books, but Prathamish. That's your line right yeah, there. Yeah, let us know. He's probably on online, so he can probably hopefully do a little bit of research for us there. So then technically, um, that snooker that CC had earlier that Mike did replace after CC made, then eventually made contact should not have actually been replaceable. Correct. Since at that point, at the start of the shot, snookers were required, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, interesting. Well, it has been a long day for all of, for all of us, so... Not the end of the world. Take the cross double here, Varun. Oh, he ran into the green. But A lot of safe balls for Varun. Oh. Anyway, yeah. that pink you know, hasn't moved from over there. Yeah, definitely advantageous for Varun. All of these balls that are on the rails played safe. I think that yellow will pass that black to that top right middle pocket. Play it with an element of safe. Yeah, I'll probably have to hit the uh, right jaw. To let it fall in. Trying to play behind black, maybe brown. This is pretty close, but I think CC has a shot still. It's been about four hours and 40 minutes of match time. Uh oh, this is going to settle close to the pocket. Yeah, yellow, in fact, is Varun's frame ball. I was fortunate enough there that he just got right behind the brown. Uh oh, I think this is a fluker here. Don't think he was playing this. 
Definitely was playing shape for the green. Big shot for CC. He needs to stay within 24. Makes good contact there. Watch out, green ball. And pink. Oh, look at this shot. Very nice. Wow. It's always a good plan if you're in a snooker to escape. Put your opponent in a snooker himself. So Now replacement is allowed, right? Yes, there's... 24 points in it. There's 27 on the table. So, Rafael Dominguez will come and just mark up that cue ball just so he gets He's got some very steady nerves. It's been a, a long day for Mike. Long weekend. You know, it's great to see that uh, he's done so much for the game here. He's even going to step up and referee the final, yeah. which is a tough ordeal, really. Actually, you're always out there. You know, you can't run and go to the bathroom mid-frame. Just got to wait for the mid-session interval to take care of the business there. Wow, I managed to make contact. Sorry, I lost all the camera work. Two cushions and hit the pink. Sorry, I hit the yellow. See, I keep doing that. I keep swapping the colors. True. And... Uh, I think we need to book a doctor's appointment for you tomorrow. Yeah, I think you're right. What's going it's on not with that eyesight? It's not the fact that I've just been sitting here for hours and end. No big deal. <laughs> but we, hey, we do it for the love of sport. Going to corner. Oh, rattles it just barely. Mm. So this is getting pretty nip and tuck, very close, back and forth. A bit edgy. Definitely fatigue has settled in because the start of the frame, this would have been end of match already. But, uh, wow. Yeah, that's definitely a sign right there with that uh, pretty bad miss there by Varun. But CeCe's not going to put him back. Trailing by 20. Gonna go around a lot. Use all the table to really put together a good clearance here. Yep, nice pot there. Comes up table. Good shot. So he's gonna be actually a little bit hampered by this brown. A little bit of awkward queuing. Not terrible. Let's go forward one cushion out into the middle of the table. Yeah, missed it. Overcutting it. Again, I think on that jacked up. Does he get the fluker? Does he get the fluker? Oh, this is close. There's the explanation yeah. of the rule by Prothmich. It says the strikers shall, to the best of their ability, endeavor to hit the ball on or a ball that could be on after a red or a free ball nominate as a red has been potted. If the referee considers the rule infringed, they shall, shall call foul on a miss unless any player required penalty points before or as a result of the stroke being played and the referee is satisfied that the miss was not intentional. So let's put it in layman's terms, Prathamish. <laughs> Is the foul and a miss before or after the shot? Yeah, it works both ways. Yeah, I would I would agree with that exactly. So if snookers are required for the shot, no replace allowed. If snookers are required after the shot, also no replace allowed. Now here's a 
pretty sure. Close to a snooker. Yep, it's gonna go mark the ball. Nice hit by CC there. That's got to be a confidence booster, even though he's going to leave this somewhat potable. Just gaining back the confidence in kicking that maybe he struggled with earlier. Super thin. Watch out, cue ball. It's going to be okay. Wow, nice shot there. This is frame ball. Yeah, 21. Right it's a big shot. Of how the balls lay now. Pink is accessible. Blue is the tough ball. Is it just thick? Is it going to roll? Is it going to roll? It's going to get close to the cushion. Shot is on, I believe. It's definitely a thin, thin cut there. The, the angle is tough, and with the length of the table. This could come down to the blue, though. At least get close to the blue if he cuts this in. Oh, he's playing the safety. It's going to leave him almost a mirror image shot. Now oh, this one's a little bit more out in the middle of the table. Yeah, Vern can put his hand on the table. You can see all the cue ball. Walks into the shot nicely. Oh, hit the same part of the pocket as earlier, and this is going to settle over the middle, I'm pretty sure. Oh, it's going to come short. Wow. It's frozen, touching this cushion, too. Yeah, a little more chalk dust has been on there since our mid-session interval that time when we cleaned. So that's why that ball might have just held up just a little bit. Oh, does this have a chance with the black? No, almost not really. Might be a snooker, though. Yep, we got a lot of comments in the chat, but yeah, we've clarified it that uh, either before or after the foul has occurred, if snooker is required, you cannot replace. Oh, it's going to hit the jaw. It hit the jaw, wow. A little unlucky. Yeah, a little unfortunate, but it's able to open up the black on that shot. So here's frame ball for Varun. Sinks it. And Cece probably will still be coming back to the table. Five-point difference, 18 on the table, so just two snookers are needed. And now the blue is out. So somewhat accessible, maybe two cushions across. Cut this, cut this blue to the top cushion and then up table. Play the cue ball two cushions across and try to get behind the black. Could also try to follow this with a sort of a three cushion middle type shot and go one rail maybe two rails with the cue ball behind the black although the black is kind of in the way you don't want to make contact with it with the blue it's 
playing the blue behind, just rolling up to it. Now he's kind of pushed this black to the rail, which is going to be an issue. This could be a slow roll safety. Yeah, that's the shot right there. Nicely done. Now I think he just has the... Yeah, I think he has both options. The one, or the one cushion escape I think is there. Don't know if the two cushion escape is there. It's really close to the pink. Yeah, I don't think it is. I think that pink takes out that two cushion Let's escape see this plan. line. He's going to know if he hit it already. Yeah, it's on. Nice shot. Well done. It's a terrific shot. Now he probably is going to thin off this blue and play it onto the black and push the cue ball all the way up table. And you can either choose to manipulate it with spin maybe a bit and get behind the pink. I like this shot using like the black kind of as a backboard. Just thinning the right edge of this blue. And if you can control the white to get behind the pink. Maybe off one, two cushions. Oh, he's going to roll up to it. Don't know if I like this, because if he's left just the right angle, see if he could get the blue behind the black by nudging it barely and pushing cue ball up table near the middle pocket. Just depends on the speed and how much he moves the blue. Sure, he could definitely pass that this is tricky. middle pocket. I'll take that side cushion and then the ball cushion and get near the pink. Yeah, he can go around even, yeah. Oh, he's, yeah, he's trying your shot. Oh, he got a little bit too straight off of it. Not going to quite work. Just nudged it a bit too much. Oh, this is... Might be on. Push the blue forward to one, one rail and get behind the black. Oh, very close. Watch out, middle pocket. <laughs> and he flukes the blue. Wow. I think that's going to end the frame. So that's a concession there. And <laughs> the pink almost went in there. So Varun Junjay takes his first lead in this final and ha happened at a great time. Bluker. Because he has a, I don't know about that wording, but he's got a 4-3 advantage and a best of nine. He needs one more frame to take the title. So as we do so many times, as we get close to the end, we got to do our good fashion roll call of thanks to everyone that has helped us out. What can we say about Mike Dominguez? He owns this Ox Billiards. He's really done wonderful work to bring snooker to the Pacific Northwest in America. So, Mike, great job. Thank you for all you do, and thanks for jumping in to scorekeep this final. Thanks to all the great staff here at Ox Billiards, Javier and Damien. They're great hosts, treating everyone like they felt at home. Christian Youngers, who's done some great work behind the scenes, with uh, getting the great pictures up for you to watch, making sure we sound clear and beautiful for all you guys. Dave Daly, who came in the booth and helped with some commentary as well as did some refereeing. We appreciate all your help, Dave. And Prathamish Sawant also was in the booth doing some commentary. Really great team effort that is helping out Ox survive and promote this great game of snooker. Carl Hancock, who owns and operates in the Pocket Snooker Club. We appreciate your two cents in the booth. Lots of fun that we had there. Looking forward to checking out your club down in Rochester, Washington, sometime soon. Sandro Manzel for his lovely pictures. Looking forward to seeing what he comes up with. He'll be definitely posting those on uh, social networks. Thanks to all the qualifying clubs that participated also, uh, and partners, the National Snooker Cuni the National Snooker Academy, let's say, Embassy Billiards down in the Los Angeles area, Chicago Snooker, Top 147 Snooker and Billiards Lounge in Richmond, British Columbia, the Arizona Snooker Club, the United States Snooker Association, which Seattle falls under that umbrella of that great organization headed by Ajaya Pradhaka, as well as Ajaya Runs Papsa, which has been a great sponsor and partner in this event. Empire Billiards, whose owner-operator CCU is in the final. He's done great work to really... He was one that kind of 
kick-started Mike's interest in snooker, and uh, Mike just took it from there and ran to great things. And the Washington State Snooker League, great help that they've done for the tour there. As well, Jamie Miller, we really appreciate her help behind the scenes, helping all the players. She got a little bit of uh, an illness that hit her, so she wasn't here all the time, but she's when she can, she comes in, helps out, makes sure all the players and staff behind the scenes are not getting dehydrated as that can happen sometimes in these long tournaments as well our sponsor hotel the silver cloud hotel a lot of players from out of town just looking for a clean place and a nice bed to sleep in were greatly entertained by our friends at the silver cloud and to all these players who did fantastic work to show off a great tournament 24 players strong came from all over the place predominantly a lot from washington state but we did have a friend from arizona a young chap really enjoyed his company and also a six-pack full of canadians that crossed that border that crossing hopefully it can ease up sometime soon as it can be a frustrating wait there but maybe uh snooker pan- snooker players should head to the line head of the line for a nexus card And with all you viewers out there, we couldn't have done it without you. We really appreciate all your viewership all day long. And thank you for the correction, Mickey Singh. It's Junja, not Junji, Junja. Varun, can he punch his card and lift that trophy? We'll see what happens, or are we going to have a decider? So thank you, everybody. Really appreciate you turning in and helping the growth, because... With the numbers that we have, obviously in the stream, will really help when we want to attack uh, company XYZ to say, hey, you know, this is a great sport. You should get involved with it. Help us out financially so we can raise up those prize pots so we can attract more players as well. Higher purses get the better players out and as well get some money for all the great people helping out behind the scenes. it's just a, a win-win situation. So, uh, and thanks for all the the phonetically spelling out there, Prathamish, for Juneja, Juneja, for uh, Varun. You know, we do have some entry forms sometimes when players are to fill out. They should help us out in the commentary booth say the names phonetically. As some of these players, I only meet for the first time when I run into the room. And I think uh, just to tack on to the end of your full roll call, we got to say a big, big thank you to Dave Bernie for making the trek all the way down from Canada, Vancouver. Um, I know you get a lot of jet lag when crossing the border. can be uh, quite, the, quite the experience, but uh, glad to have you uh, all the time. You definitely bring the, the vibe up in the room and on the live stream. And always rocking the cool socks. Thank you very much. And yeah, oof. someday I'll find out uh, how to get over that check leg of crossing that border. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. <laughs> All right, eighth frame coming up. CCU's got to dig in if he wants to retain and put us into a decider. There's that lovely trophy that both are playing for. That and $3,000 is going to find their way into one of these gentlemen's hands tonight. There has been some slow patches definitely in this final, but uh, there's been some good back and forth, that's for sure. Uh, as well, you know, back in the fifth frame, uh, CC thought he was uh, going to be able to take it away. Varun came back and really tied him up and put him in a snooker that was quite costly. So, Varun to break off. Oh, it hits the blue. Oof. But he'll be alright. Sometimes that's a cardinal rule on the break-off shot. Don't hit the blue. But it doesn't look like he's suffering too much from it. Yeah, he should be okay. Thin off this pack. Go up behind. It's going to get behind something. Close to the brown, but leave the full right side of the pack. Mm. 
And slowly these reds are opening up, so it's just going to be a matter of who falters on the safety exchange. Interesting, he's sticking to the right edge of the pack still. Doesn't want to flirt with any of these reds. Yeah, I think just the escape path is pretty tough, oh. whereas that was a much better high percentage shot to get back into the bulk, obviously. Yeah. Started learning a lot more about where you want to position the cue ball on that bulk cushion, and if you can take off, take away one side of the table while the other side is all clustered, it becomes very difficult for your opponent to kick into it. They almost have to go for the shot in order to get out of the situation or come up with a really devious escape. Like, for example, here, if you can get one of the bulk colors to block the right edge of the stack, you're forcing them to hit the balls on the left side, and you have all this traffic to go through, doesn't really quite work. That's kind of what he's trying to do here. Ooh, almost just as good, though. He's super, super close to this brown ball. Yeah, he's going to be uh, queuing down on the ball. This is... Uh as they say, fraught with danger and fraught. Thanks, Mark Thompson, for tuning in. He says it was really fun to watch. We appreciate your viewership. Oh, managed to get the shot. Oh, <laughs> unfortunate <laughs> to fluke the ball in. Wow. Or did he? There was no raise of the hand. CC is like just like, you know, wiped his feet. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. <laughs> Didn't you see the shot? I, I saw it. Let's carry on. Let's get on with business. There's no flukes in this game. The players must be too tired for. Uh, <laughs> they can't even lift hand, their hands yeah. to acknowledge a fluke. <laughs> it's quite possible. I would. I would understand. So a fluked blue is a bluker, huh? And a fluked pink. Is a plunker. Now that's getting a little ridiculous. <laughs> a pinker. I like pinker more. <laughs> Fluker yellow. I can't even think of yellow. Not every. Not everything has to end in er. No, it's not, not about just ending in er. It's about ending in l u k e r. <laughs> Yellowker. I like it. Brownker. Okay. Buck Moose is playing along. Oh, CC with a couple good pots here to play this one with the element of safe. It's sure just going to roll up on the brown here. I think everyone must realize, and we don't have obviously uh, tags for the commentator, but Christian Youngers. Yes, indeed. ER has the last name. I think we can see where this obsession with ERs is coming from. It's not ER. It's not just ER. <laughs> it's K-E-R. How about that? How about that? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, just based on how this match is going, I think we do deserve a decider. Even though it's kind of laid out here in the Pacific West. West Kerr. No, that doesn't work. Safety from Varun, leaving this pot on. Awfully thin, but uh, we've seen CC as of late miss these more often than he usually does. Not that time, he said. But doesn't manage to get up table far enough for an easy color. Yeah, run it, ran into the red. So now he's probably going to play either to pot the green or to play safe using the brown. Or he's got that yellow and blue. Yeah. Oh, he's trying to play behind the brown with the green. Oh, this is aggressive. I like it. Very close. Didn't quite get there, though. Just thinning off this red. Oh, caught the jaw. Is it going to scratch? Nope. But he almost got the hit off by accident. Let's see if this red passes the pink now. 
Doesn't have the shot there. Yeah, from where we're sitting, it doesn't... Can't... Yeah, it doesn't go for sure. It's about half ball covered. There is this red. It's uh, kind of out in the open in the middle. Kind of the... Only red really potable, I think. He is maybe looking at... Back cutting this... This red into the left corner pocket. Oh, I think you just gotta go for just a lot of traffic. You might just play safe. Yeah, hoping to run into a red. Just don't don't let it come up above the side pocket. Not a bad cue ball. Nice shot. Does leave this red on though. The left corner. And with opportunity now to get on the black. Everyone takes us on. It's tricky. Is that a shot that he's just forced in today? Because just the path back to bulk just might not be there. He could just glance off it thinly and then come off the top cushion and we'll take his cue ball into the bulk area. Kind of a tough spot to be in. Like I said, he cut off the full right side of the stack, so now forced to thin off of one of these balls and play through all this traffic. Odds of getting a two cushion escape here are pretty, pretty tough. I think in this you either go for the safe or you try to pot your way out of here. This looks like he's going to roll up to this red maybe. Does he get to miss the shot? Wow, nice escape there. Yeah, very lucky that he didn't hit that red coming back up table. Yeah, really good shot. Now I think this red does pot. So he might take this on into the left corner. He does have the full side of the rack, though. I think he's just going to thin off the right edge of the rack and try to play him behind the brown, yellow, blue. Doesn't want to leave anything too close to being potable. Oh, he has left him over these balls, which is almost as good. Second chance prize. But he has left this red out by itself. Maybe, maybe cuts to the right corner pocket. And on table. Ooh, did well to miss the jaws of the pocket there. Yeah, that's always the worry with those shots. The in-off is always a potential. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you can put a little bit of top or a little bit of bottom to take that in-off out of the equation. That's what you want to do. Just, there's no in-off there. Are you taking anything on, you think? or Flicking off that red. Oh, that red, okay. Shooting up. Oh, this could be good. Hit the brown full in the face. Oh, this could be good. Yeah, he's forced him into that situation once again. Just only has these left reds available. Everything else cut off by the blue and yellow. Not, not pink, yellow. Nothing really pots either on, out of these three reds on the right, on the left side of the table. No, just a thin clip off the middle one. Yeah. It's just going to roll up on this one. Does it have the pace? Does it have the pace? It's not going to get there? No, it didn't. Wow. So, big mistake, potentially. CC is going to put him back. Yeah, rightfully so, I think. Yeah, there's no real easy red. 
be potted, but there will be a, an adjustment. The Varun will make. Yeah, you have to be you know, paper thin on that red that's in the middle of the two. That's on the left side. Towards the brown? Away from the cushion, a little bit. Away from the brown, a little bit. A little bit more. So, second attempt here. Make the adjustments. Definitely just needs a few more rotations. Yeah, I said that. Full blooded. Fortunately, it's left. This red, and they open into the middle pocket. Unfortunately, it looks like that pink is not past that red, just below it into the top right corner pocket. Let's try to play around for black. And another thin one here. Actually, yeah, this one's, I think, too thin to try to pot. It's got the play for blue and play safe again. Hmm. Clip thinly off this black and that green could be potential to get behind. It's going straight to the green, I think. Trying to get to that same area. Yeah, it's a big target with those two <coughs> balls close together. to excuse himself again for another comfort break just uh, you know you gotta go you gotta go but sometimes it's you don't like it to see it being abused because it could have a psychological effect on your opponent always just stepping up and leaving it's just sometimes poor etiquette there I think there might be a path off this red if he just then snicks it maybe just to get around the black. Because really like it's not no, not really any other Red that's going to help him out, so this is definitely an interesting shot that Tavern has dealt with. Maybe that's why he's a bit f frightened of it. That's why he excused himself for a comfort break. Feeling a little bit better. Now it's coming back to the table. Yes, chalk Park Productions. This is the final. It's a best of five, so Varun, who's at the table right now, just needs this frame to hoist the trophy and be this year's 2023 Seattle Snooker Open champion. But Cece wants to stop that and force us into a decider. Mm, 
was fortunate. Did cannon into that black? But he cannoned in such a, a fashion that he didn't hit it full in the face, and that would have been just disastrous for Varun. Hmm. See, is he going for the juggler there? But hasn't left really any easy starter here for Varun. Now we've got a, a red in the bulk area. That makes the you know easy run and hide in the bulk area. Kind of getting out of the question with that red that has trickled up there. You know, commented before that uh, you know Varun quickly gets at it, but uh, he's been taking his time as this final has progressed. He's not as quick down on the shot, just uh, calculating each shot with care and focus. yellow in, go in between the brown and the blue and come back down table. Three. Yes, Chalkbox Productions. I have noticed that Varun definitely is a, a, a quicker player and he has been playing quite quickly throughout the tournament. But now that we're in a final, you know, and even in the beginning stages of this match, he was a little bit more quicker, you know, opening up the reds a lot sooner. But uh, as this match progressed, we saw him kind of tighten up a little bit. Red of those two is nice. See so he can just stun that one in. He'll be onto the black into the top right corner and just got a little into it. Maybe some adrenaline pumping through the veins. So it's made this black a little bit more difficult than he would have liked. Doesn't have to do much, it's gonna just roll it in, pocket weight, come off the cushion, be on that red, into the opposite corner pocket. Ooh. Yeah, just ran a bit too much on his previous shot. So twenty-three to nothing advantage here. In this eighth frame. Ooh. 
Got some reprieve there. to plant. Yeah, when we get late into the evening, maybe I get a little bit of colorblind calling reds browns. But only one really open red after this. this in, get a good angle on the pink, get that full-blooded. There is an angle to disturb this red on the cushion off this black. Now, as you can see, he missed that black dreadfully. There, there. Therefore, there was no breakout there, so... Thirty-two to zero in this eighth frame for CCU, a frame that CC does need to force us into a decider in the final of the 2023 Seattle Snooker Open Championship. Unfortunate that Red Bull didn't hit anything, so it's given Varun an opportunity to get his first points on the board here. Still a messy little table. I think there's a good angle, though, here with this pink to come up to the top cushion and disturb. Those reds and black. Oh, trying it, but just. Bit unfortunate there. going for it there. Very close to perfection there. Shot there.
All right, I stood away for a bit, but back now. Looks like they're still battling with all these balls. The bottom left corner of the table. See so right there. Yeah, I think the, that red is just blocking the potting angle on this red that's out in the open. See, so having a good look at it. Oh. Shot. It gets behind the green. Oh, I see you met Chalkbox Productions in the stream. It's our fellow pool player, Patrick Nix. Hosts a live stream out of his uh, house. He has a bunch of cameras set up and uh, runs amateur challenge matches every few weeks or so. Welcome, welcome. This is the final. What did I miss? Seems like CZ made a few balls, maybe off of some stray reds. Yeah, and a few options. But just how the table is set right now, just couldn't really... Had to play some smart shots, develop. Varun did actually have a red that he took on, and then was on a pink. And was trying to develop the, the red and the black that are near the top cushion. But unfortunately, just had an in off with his cue ball. Mm. Dave147 in the YouTube chat asking anybody know the prize money? Yeah, they're playing for a difference of $1,500, I think, right now. First place prize is $3,000. Second place is $1,500. Oh, this is going to go in. Wow. That's, that's insane. Some wild stuff. But still no real great opportunity for CC here to really done and dust the frame. Maybe we can take this double on. Who's going to get behind the brown? Yes, he is. Wow, what a shot. This could be what he needs to attempt to seal this frame. This has been a grind of a frame, that's for sure. Yeah, it definitely gives CC the opportunity to get some points, get it further away from Varun's reach. Looks like he hit the pink there, which was on its spot, so fortunately for the respotting, it's going to be pretty straightforward. I think uh, he's got a decent amount of reds to look at, and I think he's trying to go two cushions, miss the pink and the black, and hit these two reds in the bottom area of the table that are kind of clustered together. Oh, now he decided to kind of slow roll this one, and there he gets contact. Nice shot. Interesting how he... A little more softer shot there, and he was able to get out of the snooker. His last shot was just kind of uh, yeah, rather reckless. <coughs> Lots of pace on the shot. And unfortunately, Kennedy into the pink and succumbed to six penalty points. Yep, Savage is right. Now CC trying to take bigger lead. I think uh, two more reds need to go down before he can really seal this frame, most likely. Well, I guess sure. actually one more red and a color. That's going to be pretty tricky to do how these reds are.
positioned right now, so he might be able to kind of take out that one red that's near the green with the angle, just scooch past the, the black and the two reds there, and hopefully not cannon into the pink and come back up table. Oh no, oh. opened everything up. It's going to leave the green with hampered queuing, however. Yeah, I got doesn't lucky there. Yeah, it doesn't really leave much on, actually. I would have thought one of these reds would have settled over this left corner pocket easily, but nonetheless, Rune's going to have to play a safety, most likely, here. Thin off the edge of this rightmost red. Play it up table. Fifty three the difference. One more red going down means that fifty one point game. Yeah, it just thins off the edge, tries to play up. We want it to be to the just slightly to the right of the blue so we can use it as a snookering ball. Still not a not a bad shot. A thin clip on the right side of that red on the top cushion. Hit it a bit thicker than he wanted to, maybe. Whenever CC has that sort of sudden stand up, I think he just miss hits the ball, it seems. Doesn't quite get exactly the action he wants. You can kind of tell as a player right, right when the ball leaves your tip whether or not you're going to kind of go the direction you're expecting the ball to go. True, it's Vern taking up this thin cut. Wow. It's a big shot. Wow, nice pot. And he's in the blue. Still alive in this one. Taking a high value color, bridging the gap. Plays it forward. Try to take this cut on this. Red just past the black. It's another big shot. He's going to leave it on. In fact, his frame ball for CC, CC right here, this red. It's cut it a bit thick. But still, nothing on. It's trivial, at least. These guys have been making some phenomenal shots today, though. True. All tournament long, we saw some great shots. Haven't seen, you know, seen a few... Uh, High breaks here and there, but not a lot of fireworks, as we can expect with the amateur game. It's interesting when you watch the professionals, you expect them to make anything, so it's a lot more exciting if they miss. Mm -hmm. And the amateur game, well, they're going to miss a lot more than they do, so it's more exciting when you see them building a break yeah. up and up, and yeah. they, they're not going to miss. All right, so another safety wants to miss it. Nice. Close, gets close to the brown. I think he was trying to play behind it, but again, second prize. It's not bad. Pushing this red once again. I think he's covered the leftmost red. And this, this red in the middle doesn't pot past the black, so pretty good safety. And CC might have to thin off the rightmost red. Problem is leaving this this guy into the left corner pocket in the left part of the table. 
It's found success with the brown, however, so maybe place safe back there again. Catches it super thin. Oh, and manages to maybe block the pocket. Nope, this long red still pots. Big shot. It's on the cushion. I don't know if he's going to go for it. Yeah, that's quite tough. Big reward if he is able to make it as that black is around. The natural angle will take him off the cushion. Looks like he's loading up. Just overcut it a bit. Is it going to go in the middle? Oh, wow. Now hasn't really left an easy shot for CC either. Back and forth. These guys are still going. This red closest to the blue spot pots. Just... Just needs one for frame ball. Watch out, Brown. It's been CeCe's friend here at the end of this frame. Yeah, it's as we've talked about in the broadcast before, it's that ideal length away from the cushion that Brown is enough space that you can get your cue ball behind there. We've seen CC done it a couple of times in this frame, and he's tried even a few more times to get there. One thing I feel like Varun's got to try and find that Brown sometime and get behind on his own regard. Mm-hmm. It's going to cut this red to the left. Doesn't want to get it too thick. Still, balls blocking balls, nothing easily pots, even long shots. It's technically this red pots into the left corner pocket, but seems a little risky since you're probably going to lose your cue ball. But uh, Yeah, I think you might cannon into the green or the brown right there on the right side after that red ball that you spotted there. So, shot to nothing, not really on. Oh, this was in. I didn't know you could pot that. Great pot there by Brown. Wow. wow. Or CC actually made that pot. My apologies. Yeah, CC, yeah. <laughs> this is that, which is now going to mean snooker's required. 43 remaining. Can at best put Varun 50. So two snookers required right now, unless he gets high value snookers. Needs to play for either pink or black to stay in it. Overcut this ball. Yep. Well, that's a thin cut. Yeah, I, I think it's fancy CC to take it on. Mm -hmm. If another red goes down, I think this will be a concession most likely. Yeah, pots that ball. Just run up ever so gently to this pink. Mm -hmm. Actually, maybe he's looking to pot it into the yellow pocket. Make a statement, maybe? Is it a confidence booster? Nope. This is that pink. And, uh... Yep, looks like Varun concedes the frame. No, oh, he's coming back to the table. Or now he's coming, now he's coming to the table. Just hmm. a little discussion. Have to get to uh, find out what's going on after the match, maybe. Uh, Fern and referee Dominguez both smiling, so it's all good. I need to catch up on the score. Missed the one. One more red. So 56 7. 35 available. Yeah, Vern 
it's four snookers. And if it gets hooked behind this yellow, I imagine it'll be a concession. Oh, it's going to take it on. True. Maybe if he misses. Yeah. It's going to hit this full butted. Look at him. He's just oh. going for it. Hits it pretty clean. And Is it going to go in? It. Oh, wow. That's the Varun style. That's what I'm saying. He just gets down and it's those kick shots. And when he does it in pool, it's that much more impressive because he'll just kick a ball in and out of nowhere just rifles it. <laughs> if you've you never seen him play before, you'd, you'd be kind of surprised as to how he's doing that. But wow, another Great almost shot. almost yeah. picture perfect. R repeat snooker here. Wow. Look at that. And he's going to get behind the blue. My goodness. That's that's what I call the Varun special. Yeah. It's going to get glued to this brown, yellow to the rescue. Mm -hmm. Can he kick out of it once again? A little swerve, maybe? Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. I won't be surprised. It's cushion push first, maybe a little bit of running side. Yeah, it makes the contact. It's this red. Oh, it's going to hit the jaw with the uh, with the white. And the green's going to push it down. Yeah, everything was moving on that <laughs> shot. It's just a wild man just firing the cue ball around the table. Series of events. This red's going to bounce. But Rune's uh, not playing to pot this. Maybe maybe bought this with the pink. It's at least guaranteeing a high value color, but you like you'd like to keep this red on the table because the chance of a free ball helps shorten the margin generously. Mm-hmm. You get one snooker, the free ball gains you access to more reds that end up getting respotted. Anyway, so mm, this might settle and block with the green brew. Oh, it's, yeah, Good shot. perfect. Another rifle coming up. Makes the kick shot. And we're going back and forth. Oh, this red is on now. This might be the mistake of the opening that CC needs. Yeah, Bruin giving us a big smile as he walks by the commentary booth. He knows uh, this isn't looking good. Good pot there by CC. Well, part of an earlier prediction is correct. It looks like we're going to be going to a decider. Will it be a black ball respot? <laughs> Only time will tell. Yeah, who made that prediction? Holy smokes. Talk about drama. Mm, oh, that's green. green. But I wonder why I didn't take the pink there. I don't know. He wanted the natural position for the yellow. He wants the clearance. Apparently CC has somewhere to be now, so he's trying to get out of here sooner. Now he's starting to shoot a little bit more in rhythm. Yeah, the frame is done and dusted, so he can be a relaxed a little bit more. Those shots become so much more easier when the frame's already been put to bed. Yep. So we've got a decider coming up. It looks like there's going to be just a little bit of a five-minute break as we're getting... Ten-minute break is going to be happening right now, so we're just going to push a little bit later into the evening they're going to have a five, ten minute break. Just so uh, all you out there in the streamland, go get yourself a, a cool drink, you know, something to nibble on, and we'll be right back in ten minutes with the deciding frame of the final of this 2023 Seattle Snooker Open.
right, everybody. I hope you got a nice, cool drink in front of you and <coughs> some nice, tasty treats because we are going into a decider. Can you believe it? What a day. What a battle between two great competitors from here in Washington State. So I think any player that gets some good chances definitely can make things work. We did have a bold, bold prediction earlier in this match, pretty much at the onset. The gentleman had timed in, said the pitchers are going to a decider, going to a black ball respot. So that is definitely still on the table. Yeah, talk about a grind. Clay Belvoir checking in. He says, wow, what a grind. Yeah, remember when you signed up for this tournament? You were, you were ready for this final, right? CC breaks us off to get started. And not his best shot. This left a red on into the left middle for Varun. Mm. I'm shivering. It's the decider. He's coming up. Ooh, just came up a bit much. Won't be on the blue. Does have an angle on the green to come off cushion and into the reds. <clears throat> yeah, this red does pass. Bottom part of the rack. Mm -hmm. Good eyes there, Christian. Spotting that one red, that's what we should be playing for. Oh, does it have the be. juice? That's looking oh, really nice. Wow. Pretty as a pitcher. Got a little angle, too, to be on the black. Ooh, just wow. get kind of straight, or just off straight, get a, an angle. To be a bit lower on that black is going to have to use the cushion to come up into the pack but these pacey shots are a rune special oh I got one red loose but also might have opened up this other red no he's just sure. looking at the top one this must be really so close he's looking at it Yeah, Clay's saying he had a chance to beat Varun. <laughs> He's still steaming. Yeah, I think that was in the uh, round of 16. Clay and Varun were going back and forth, and I think the two frames that Clay lost were in his hands and just made a few key mistakes at the end. That's what it takes, though. Who knew he would be here in the final? Oh, it's not just the blue. I think it's on now. CC's got an angle to come onto that wide open black there. Too much. Too much. <coughs> Overcut it, but his cue ball's going to get. Nope, not going to get safe. for CC. But how the reds are nicely done. Mm -hmm. Good safety. Yeah. The reds are acting like Clifford, the big red dog. It's one big red to shoot for down there. Yeah. Imagine he won't likely be leaving a pot on if he just rolls up into the bunch. Yeah, you don't need to be 
a real powerful shot here. Just a nice, soft, little dent, delicate shot. Two cushions. Yep. Nice placement and good speed. Just wondering if there's a touching ball. And no. Oh, referee Dominguez investigates. Doesn't look like it. It's a little close. Hard to see from this angle. Sort of four ball plant here. Is that what he's looking at? I think so. Is he looking at the three balls on the top of the rack and the one sticking out on the left a little bit? It's yeah, plantable. I was looking at it, but not for sure, so just going to clip off and come back up table. Oh, this red squirted out up to the right. Oh, it's a good cue ball, though. Two reds to the right of the black. The further right one, he has a chance to maybe just thin, sneak off of it and come back, but opting for the easier safety. <coughs> well, this could, could be, be good. nicely behind. Wow. Very close. Yeah, gave it every chance in Omaha to get behind that brown. Now, well, probably just a screw back, or is he going to roll forward up into the. Oh, he's just going to thin off of it. Okay. Both playing for that same pocket in the back rail. Getting behind brown and yellow. This is a pretty good one if he's cut off his rightmost red, because now it just leaves room in the middle of the pack. It's going to have to be forced to hit the left part of this six red triangle sitting up in the middle of the table. Which isn't too bad, that bottom. Left red of the three of the triangle that you mentioned there, Christian. You can flick off that left bottom one and kind of just act as a almost a break a break off shot. Mm -hmm. Using two cushions to come up. Oh, the in off. He called it in, in the Twitch chat. Buck buck moose. Yeah, he put a lot of follow on that to avoid the in off. I think unfortunately hit it a little bit thicker than you would have liked. See, so he's got a tester here. First big opportunity. He's reaching for the extension again. So we did notice that uh, he has been missing a couple of these shots with the extension a little bit more stretched out. <coughs> will, he, will he learn from those mistakes? Pull this one off. This is a massive shot. Yeah, he's been cutting those all to the left quite consistently, over cutting to the left. Left out. Another easy red here for Varun. Stun up and be onto this blue into the opposite middle pocket. Oh, wow. Uncharacteristic miss. True. Maybe just took it for granted. I think so. I thought he was, had that one home. Just the pressure of a decider getting to both these players. on the pro circuit sometimes when you make a miss it could be your final shot but in the amateur game I think you're going to get chances so it's not the end of the world if you miss a pot you should get chances but you know someone could just find stroke at the stroke of midnight and run a high break well this is going to a respot of black you said right I didn't say that. Someone in the chat room said that. Oh, okay. That was their wager. Oh, this might get behind green. Oh, wow. Might flick off and go in, though. Oh, doesn't want that. Wow. <laughs> this is insane. Incredible. This must be a swerve shot, I think. you got to go all out for this red. There's no way you can play safe anywhere here. You can flick off the reds on the right side of the table. 
Can you even see the reds on the right side? Oh, yeah. Okay. Hopefully at an angle he can get behind or near well, the brown and yellow, just because it is a sitter there for that uh, red over the top left corner pocket. Yeah, true. Yeah, this is quite the quite the snooker. Well, I mean snooker on the other balls, I guess the mainly the one red that's sitting over the pocket. Doesn't see the reds on the right hand side. Full ball, so no chance of a three foul rule situation. But yeah, it's gonna have to play a really good cue ball here. Can also opt to just leave it on the right long rail and you know, use Use the reds and the pink to block the other red. That might be what he's doing. Yeah, Lee Vestal in the YouTube chat saying, only three likes? Yeah, give us some love. Pop us a like button. It's free. Subscribe to the channel. Get some notifications. The more likes we get, the more people get to see Snooker in the USA, right? It's not often you get to see this, so let's grow the sport, help us out. But this this plant is going to be quite the achievement if CC can get this. Is he playing the plant, or is he playing top cushion with running side? I don't know. Top cushion running side? You mean with the cue ball running to the red? Correct, and mm. pocket it into that pocket. Oh, he went for the plant. Oh, but he's fortunate to get that red to glue to the bottom rail. Sorry, the top cushion. Wow. Blue actually is acting as a nice guide for Varun as he just needs a a thin hit on one of those reds. Yeah, yeah that nice. sends him back. This could get this could get deep. It's a nice wall right here. Yellow, brown, blue. Both players putting each other back there constantly. Based on this angle. See if he can thin off this red that he pushed over on the top cushion slightly without going in off. If he just catches it thin, it looks like he's just going to roll up to it. Is it going to make contact? No, missed it completely. And left a shot on. It doesn't look like Varun's going to put him back, but... You know, CC will make that fine adjustment. Oh, and he missed it. If he can just stun into this red, he should have the pink into the opposite top corner pocket. Yeah, pink is on. So another opportunity strikes. Yeah, these reds are a little bit funny. Wonder if he has the angle, maybe to come off cushion and can it into that red that's right of the pink to be onto the red that's just below the pink right now into this similar top left corner pocket. Oh, I see. Trying to hold it. That's what you're saying. Might be able to just hold it with pace. That distance touch is difficult to gauge. Oh, he's still on it. He actually brush yeah, some of the reds outwards more. Just might be a little bit straight though. It's just going to be tough for him Just 
dream of having a little bit of angle. Yeah. Just to get kickstarted on this. Just to be able to <coughs> stun up for the pink. Yeah, a little bit more angle than I thought. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but from our vantage point on the camera angles, it was more of a, a straight-in shot. Looks like he's got a little bit of an angle to stun. He's just wondering. That red's to the left of the black spot, just that kind of lone one in the middle there. I just wonder if it passes that other red that's out in the middle on the left side. Hey, Daniel tuning in on Facebook says, boom. Yes, sir. CC's the man. Varun's showing us his worth as well. Oh, overcut that. Mm. Does he leave anything on? Is there a gap between these bunch of three reds? Don't know. If he can't see the leftmost red, then I don't think anything is on. He's gonna have to play a safety most likely. The ball's light kinda weird too. This is gonna be kind of a grinder of a frame unless unless blue and pink get respotted. Oh, he didn't make contact with anything. This, this lone red is the one that sees he's looking at. Yeah, well, cross double here, come yep. off the Top cushion, get his cue ball back to bulk. Classic shot. Yeah, I just noticed the Buck Buck Moose on Twitch. His, uh, his icon is uh, Dark Side of the Moon album. I like it. Pink Floyd. See both sides of the of the stack. I'm pretty sure. Just gonna thin off one edge. Yep, makes plenty of contact with the reds. Keeps them all together. Oh yeah, hosting on Twitch is no longer a thing. Yeah. Yeah, we're not even partnered or anything either. So we need to set up all that stuff. I guess partner is not the right word, but we're not even able to accept any donations, I think, right now. We need the follow, follower counts. So it's a good safety here, though. It's only yeah. really left this right red, lone red on the top cushion. Got a little exchange here. Just have to see whoever falters is probably going to leave their opponent in. Wow, nice thin hit there. Oh, made contact with the pink. It's gonna leave at least an edge, possibly, of this red on the left rail. Yeah. Maybe enough that at least he can go off the top cushion, come back into bulk. Yeah, misses the point in the jaws of the pocket. This could get behind the brown nicely. the speed. That's a good shot. Now I don't think there's actually a left edge of the stack. So Varun may actually have to kick into the stack here. Kick into the reds off one cushion maybe. Yeah, just a slow roller shot. Just to nestle up to one. Maybe there's a gap there with that uh, red yeah, there you go. Oh, but the black. Just a lot of traffic that way. Mm-hmm. Now, the twists and turns are going to happen here as all the color balls are moving up into the bulk side of the table. Yeah, we've got a lot of reds down at the business end. So. Both players tightening up their game a lot. You've seen a lot more defensive play back up to bulk. And a lot of stuff to hide behind now that all the, all the color balls are up table. It's gonna might come down to somebody laying a really mean snooker. This red passes, maybe? No. 
It's gonna rub off the edge. You might be shooting at this. Yeah, it goes. Oh, wow. Just caught it thick. It's not gonna get any coverage. And this is... This is on. It's just the thin... Thin contact. And the problem with this is that he's gonna be coming back down table. <laughs> Where all the... All the colors are non-existent. True. Hopefully after this... Uh Red, maybe he can be on the black. I'll yeah, take maybe. Take it in and get it back onto the... Let's try to pot that at dead weight. It's awfully risky. Awfully. Yeah, you gotta trust the table a little bit, but these tables are very true. And overcut it. It's gonna come down table. I think CC's on a red here. Yep, this, this ball pots. Based on where the reds lie, black is probably the worst color to get spotted unless unless that red is covering the spot. In which case it becomes the pink. And it goes to the pink spot, and I think that would be ideal. We're getting the pink. Any ball in the pink spot. That's a nice shot. Is he going to get to the pink, actually? It's awfully close, but I don't think he's there. It's like a little bit of blockage, but he is on this blue. To the middle pocket. I would probably want to take out the red at the top of the top end of the bulk end of the table. Yeah, take this red down first. Yeah, then that clears an opportunity to run and hide back in bulk if need be. At least the blue's on its spot. That's kind of at least somewhat encouraging. Hopefully you can take this and get onto the black and get the black back onto that pink spot as a red has occupied. Well, we ran into the green, but I think the yellow, or sorry, the pink is on. I keep doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yellow and pink, yeah. The yellow and pink. The pink is on. I think I know what it is. My uh, my favorite Starburst uh, candy flavors were always yellow and pink. Maybe that's it. Oh, is he going to cannon these reds? Does he have a shot? <laughs> Position for orange next, he says. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe uh, in the battle border we'll have a uh, a frame of super snooker where there was the orange and purple ball. Oh, yeah, we have a gray and purple, like I said, for snoople. But where do you put the orange and uh, in gray? Or, sorry, orange and purple. I believe the orange was between the blue and the pink. Yeah. And the purple ball was between the brown and blue. Brown and blue. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, Daniel. Yellow Starburst, all right? If you don't like it, <laughs> go suck on a lemon, okay? Wow, look at this snooker here. David Brock is back. Ladies and gentlemen, he's back. Is this a good morning to you, David? This is the decider right now. You're 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 getting here right at the right time. Yeah, probably eight thirty in the morning over there in the UK. Thanks for tuning back in, David. Glad you've been here with this journey. Oh, look at this thin hit. It's gonna come a little too far, I think. Late night snooker, indeed. This is the decider of the snooker Seattle Open, Seattle Snooker Open 2023 final. We're in the decider. CCU, Varun Juneja, they've been battling it out. Both players exhausted. Everyone else in the room exhausted, honestly, but this is what we're here. This is why we play the game. It is the final. It's going to hit the pink there. This is another good snooker, I think. Does he get full coverage this time? I think he's got it. It's a tough one. Yeah, David Rock says, fair play to Varun. Thought CC would blow him away. Yeah, Varun's playing sharp. He had a high break of his tournament this, uh, I believe it was second frame. It was a seven, 74 to 0, one visit frame. 
which definitely jump-started his game and gave him the confidence to win a few more. And now it's to the decider. It was 3-4. CC was down. It's a scr scurry back, and now we're in it. I mean, if you guys aren't entertained, then I don't know, I don't know how else to entertain. He's kicking at the balls, nudges up against the red nicely. CC is probably going to opt to try to put him right in that same area up on the ball cushion this time. Yeah, a little soft, little small flick off this red. I think he's under hit it just a bit. Quite a lot, actually. actually yeah. yeah, quite a lot. Leave the chance for Varun with a long pot here. This is risky though, because you're going to be running into these reds most likely. Unless you put a lot of low on this cue ball, you're at least going to make contact with some red and then leave something a down table. Probably too risky to go for, I'd imagine. Drew a lot of lower, a lot of top, that's for sure. So I mean, both players have tightened up a lot, especially two in this decider, so I'd be surprised if everyone were to take it on. Oh, this looks pretty decent, too. This looks good. Oh, it just came a little bit short off that last rail. I thought it was going to come a little bit wider. That red was on. He went for it. Oh, is he going to get up against it? Nope. Misses the brown. Pot is on. True. Thin cut here for Varun. He's going to run into a lot of stuff, I'd imagine, here. Unless he really juices the cue ball with a lot of spin. Oh no, he was able to miss it completely by just cutting it. Almost overcut it, but uh, good shot. Yeah, cannon nicely into that blue. It's going to black into the yellow. The angle is going to take him back down table. Some reds are in the open. Problem with this black respotting though is that it's going to it's going to be blocked. You can see the spot pretty clearly there. There's like a red right next to that black spot, but not enough to force it to move so points are points but uh it's gonna be difficult now to open it up twenty five twenty one back and forth this could be a black ball respawn Oh, he's in the pink. This is this is huge if he gets his pink spotted up. Does his red pass into the bottom left corner? Just let me look at it. It looks like it does from our camera angle, but uh, these cameras have proven us wrong many times. Oh, he hit it but thick. Got to make the pot. If it passes now, that's a big error. bottom of those three reds definitely goes but that's very dangerous mm -hmm. yeah you're going to be opening everything up yeah if he Even misses it he might be thinking about it I don't know if it passes that, that topmost red I don't think it does mm -hmm. but this red in the open where's that bird's eye view again like one that's open just below the pink, all by itself. Does that? I think that passes these three reds, and we'll go into the top left middle. That's what I'm trying. Oh, middle. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Top left uh, corner, right? Top left corner, yes. Yeah, that, that's the one I've been wondering, wondering about, this one that's kind of floating above all the reds. It's either that or the bunch of three, the one at the bottom of the bunch. Mm. Those are the only two, I think. The one at the bottom might be what he's going for. Oh, the middle. Oh, and he's up. Wow. Just a bit too much. Great effort there by CC. Wow. He's yeah. Just crucial to make the... He fooled all of us. Yeah. I mean, he had to make that red because he was going to leave something over the pocket. Now, is he going to play safe behind the same wall that they've been flirting with all game? Could try the cross double, too. Oh, he's playing safe. This might not get there. I think he's going to leave this red on, actually. This could be pivotal. Very tricky, though, with this cue ball close to the vault cushion. The angle that it goes in, he might cannon into some other things down there. But just on first glance, just trying to see where his safety route would be. If he was to play. Yeah, I think maybe he's just got to suck it up and, and take on this red. Oh, he hit it thick, but going to get away with it, I think. Oh, don't go in off. Right, let's put the black over the top right corner. So that takes that pocket out of play, but... Uh, Whoever is to get a red is going to be quite happy because that black is sitting pretty for an easy pocket. Is this red hot? <clears throat> Rightmost red, closest to the black spot, might pass. And if it does, then you have to take that on and off of it, play it two ways. You have plenty of colors to, to hide behind if you miss, plenty of colors to shoot at if you make it. Black over the, over the corner. I think next red's going to be, the person who pots the next red I think is going to be able to take the initiative in this frame. Yeah, doesn't quite pot, but does he have a good cue ball? Does he have a good cue ball? Oh, it's awfully close, but he's left it on, I think. Yeah, there's the angle. This red goes. Varun has knocked these in today. Plenty of times. Harder shots than yeah, this. Yeah, that's... That looks like... Does it just get by? Wow. It's a good angle right there from our camera team. And he nails it. Wow. And this black is on. Pivotal part of the frame. That was a massive shot. Yep. Oh, slow down, slow down. Okay, it's all right. Yeah, this is big. A lot of these reds are open. Black is there. This is just what Varun needed. Trying to knock off the defending champion. Now the support is getting strong and... In the, chat, the chats. Yeah. <clears throat> and now he's back in rhythm. This could be could be curtains. Wants to get off the rail, but has the natural angle to come down for the black. like that's on. Oh, now he's his stroke. Now he's found that Varun rhythm. Oof, almost missed that one. That's true. Puck, puck, moose. It does look like a, a younger version of Tony Drago out there. Just zipping around the table. He's on a break of 32. The difference 36. This is so frame that ball. That is frame ball. Massive shot. So now, yeah, 36 point difference, 27 remaining. 
And uh, Varun's still at the table shooting. Don't know if he's going to just roll up on the back of this black. This would be an example where the roll up, I think, is valuable. Or does he take this on, try to get the clearance? He knows that if he, even if he gets the safety, he sees he's going to be coming back to the table. Oh, goes to overcut it. And manages to snooker him behind the yellow. So a break of 33 from Varun. This means CC. Snookers required. Yep, CC needs the three snookers as there's 37 in it and 27 on the table. Makes contact well with the yellow. Mm. How many? Three snookers? Correct. Yeah. So looking pretty CC. dire. Yeah, CC uh, has left this yellow on. That that's, you could just see the championship right there. Yeah, that was that was the shot. I wonder how much how important that's going to be. Is it going to come back to bite him, or will he get another? Because CC, I think, is just looking at this yellow. Yeah, I'm getting behind the it. blue. Correct. Green to the rescue. I don't think so. Yeah, this cue ball is on. Another big shot. And he's potted it. Certainly should do it here. I think he knows he's got the championship now. There is a new king of the Emerald City. Oh, Varun. Juneja. 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 And now oh, he's, he's just, just showing off. Yep. Is he going to pop oh. this pink? Quite a battle back and forth, guys. And he goes for it in the middle. What a match, but here come the handshakes That's right the there. Match. The handshakes are there. Wow, Varun Junjay, Junajay has the Seattle Snooker Open Champion of 2023. Have a big smile. We'll be standing by with the trophy presentation. We'll keep the stream going. We re really appreciate all you fans tuning in. It was definitely some late night drama here on the West Coast. Thank you all for all the patrons viewing, all the players that played. And thanks again, Christian Youngers, for being in the booth. It's David Bernie saying good night from Seattle. And we'll see you hopefully sooner than later. I guess the next biggest snooker event will be the Women's Championship. So good night, everybody. But stay tuned. We'll keep the stream running so you can check out the great trophy presentation.
had a great championship. Force it all the way. He's a new champion this year. Is this your first tournament win in Snooker Maroon? Over here. Is this your first Snooker tournament win? Over here. Over here? I think so, yeah. Yeah? Probably won a bunch yeah, back did. in India. But all right. Your 2023 Seattle Snooker Open champion, Varun Jujay. his trophy, he can do whatever he wants. All right. Uh, that one, Hart, ready? Here we go. One, two, go. Excellent. Sure. You want to give it a kiss for the camera? <laughs> give us a kiss. Give us some love. <laughs> oh, come Thank on. Please. You know, thanks for organizing this event. You're the best. best guy. Can you please lean forward? Just hang here. There we go. Nice, nice, right? Excellent. Well done. Thank you. And. Last year's champion almost went back to back. You know, almost didn't lose a frame in two Seattle Open championships. That's for sure. It was a hell of a fight that he put out there. But a runner-up and high run of 78 Empire owns Billiards own CCU. Cool. So, kudos to Empire. Yay! Good night, everybody.